fecal matter is going up my nose and down my mouth. <laughs> I can't breathe. Everything's getting dark. The world is slipping away. I don't see how I'll ever escape from this one. Hello and welcome to The Conversation. I'm Heil Russell. And I'm Josh Wallen. Josh Wallen, from off of the Geek Critique, I take it. No, I, this is uh, the football player Josh Wallen, actually, uh, oh. here to discuss. Yeah. Oh. Are, are we talking about Mario, Super Mario Strikers? Right? No. Wait, wait. By football, you mean the, the kicky kind and not the, the throwy kicky kind. I can't remember what football player Josh, what form of football football player Josh Wallen actually plays, so I don't know. Because I know, I know the Niffle League just had their uh, Super Bowl <laughs> where they deflate their balls. So, mm-hmm. I take it if you are the the kicky throwy football player, now you're on break. You're on summer break. I, I heard that was a great game too. I really congratulations to both teams. <laughs> I, I guess uh, what I don't know. Uh, I, there there was an Avengers teaser during it, and and Pepsi had a commercial, and there are like seven beer commercials maybe. So yeah, Super Bowl, go Niffle. Um, so, <laughs> this is the conversation. Josh, last time you were on, it was a special occasion. We were talking about K. Rule in Smash Brothers. That was the day he was revealed, and uh, kind of took everybody off guard, and you, you're you on the episode, and we were excited, and we, we recorded <laughs> for like three and a half hours, and, and... And now, and now K. Rule, like, and Smash Brothers Ultimate is out! Yeah. And, it, and we've all experienced it. And now we don't care anymore. And and now we're waiting for the next fix. We The, the next big news cycle. Be- because it's old news and we, we, we crave more. We're like junkies who need, uh, uh, need to shoot up with something crazy and unexpected. And I can't say we have anything crazy and unexpected to talk about on this episode. But I did want to have you on this episode because we're going to be talking about the arse. On this episode, yes, the R's retro and rare. The R's. Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute. I've I've prepared my whole uh, my whole appearance based around the cheat board from Banjo Tooie. Is that not? Is that not it? No, uh, no, I, I don't know. What, yes, it always has R spelled. It has R spelled backwards at the oh, top, right? See, I thought you were to say I, pre- I I prepared my appearance on this episode by wearing assless chaps. I didn't know where you were going to go. With my setup there, and that's where my mind was. But you, you... well, I'm not the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Oh, because he dressed like a male stripper in the mid '90s, right? Yes, yeah. yes, that's why. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know my wrestling. I I know wrestling more than I know Niffle, apparently. Uh, so yeah. So, so what are we doing? Uh, due diligence, Josh. This always let's happens. Get, yeah. Let, I, now I wanted to have you on this episode before I get to due diligence because. Uh, out of my entire social circle, you are what passes for a Metroid expert. So I was like, <laughs> I was like oh. all right, fair enough. Because you, you know me, Josh, and and I, I'm the I'm the guy who for 19 years has been saying, uh, well, my favorite Metroid game is Galactic Pinball, and that's cute and charming, maybe the first couple of times, but after a while, the ignorance just wears thin, and. It's just not charming, and it's it's just not adorable anymore. And, and people want expertise. People want knowledge. And I don't. I certainly don't have any. So I, I was like, well, I guess I could ask Josh if he wants to be on this episode. Sorry, Josh, but uh, begrudgingly. No, I mean you're a busy. You're a busy guy with your monetized YouTube channel. So I don't. <laughs> Oh man, I, I still feel, I, I feel, still feel so bad on your behalf about uh, that. Uh, you know what? I uh, we'll we'll get into it. But uh, no, I mean I feel bad asking any fellow content creator to to do this show. Um, you know, I had Malik on last episode, a cartoon gamer, and you know I, I feel bad asking him. I feel bad asking you. I feel bad asking anybody. Even DK Vine staff, I feel bad asking about. I just have a a guilt complex, I guess. It's the no man. Look, I I, I always enjoy coming on here, uh, uh, like supposedly to talk about whatever the different topics are, but usually just to make Power Rangers and wrestling tangents for 
Sure. And and end up recording for like seven or eight hours straight. Well, well that's not going to happen. It's a great time. I, I guarantee you that's not going to happen. Uh, I, 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 I will take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, no, this is going to be shorter than the K Rule episode. I, I promise you, it's going to be shorter than the K Rule episode. Now, if it's just, you know, 20 seconds less than, then sure. Mm hmm. Technically, yeah. still true. Yeah. Anyway, uh, due diligence real quick. Uh, support DK Vine on Patreon, please. Now more than ever. <laughs> I need your support. <laughs> I don't like to beg for money. I don't like to do it. So instead, I'm going to focus on what you get in return. Everybody who who backs us on Patreon, one, $1 a month, you get the stickers, Josh. You get the free, high-quality, amazing DK Vine stickers. Highly collectible, I should add. And uh, we're, we're approaching mid-February, which means the 2019 Series 4 stickers are about ready to roll out. So, uh, What a great Valentine's Day gift for your loved one. Oh, uh, Compcock Day, which is why we time it mid-February. <laughs> but yes, uh, the K. Rule Amiibo is coming out. So, you know, a lot, lot of big events happening mid-February, and I, I feel like the stickers that we mail out to all of our patrons are the biggest. Uh, if you've been a patron for, for a while, you, you still get Series 4, even if you got Series 3, even if you got Series 2. Everybody gets them, and um, that that's a dollar a month. Two dollars a month, you get early bird conversations and video content, and five dollars a month, you get to listen to this bullshit live, because who wouldn't <laughs> want to do that? <laughs> Ten dollars $10 gets you. Ten dollars, Josh, gets you all of the past series stickers. If you have not already received those, plus you get the brand new DK Vine bumper sticker. We we got a new one, and if if you already got the old one, you're still gonna get the new one at the ten dollar and up tier. So got a new one. It's oval shaped now, and it's got the new logo on it. So that that ghastly fruit stripe logo. It's out of here. It's gone. It's in, in the trash heap of history, in the landfills, killing the coral reefs, choking some dolphins, but the, the new beautiful sticker. It looks like one of those uh, OBX stickers, but it's black. And it's, it's so people will think you, you swung on DK Vine or like, like, like that's some sort of like destination for, for drunken beachcombing rednecks i don't know but they'll, they'll think you're an oppressive specimen if you have this on your car you'll so. get stopped in the parking lot and people will ask you what your bumper sticker is about yes you will and then you'll have, and to, then you'll have to provide this overly long explanation of well you see back on the internet in 1999 and then they'll slash your tires it's it's yeah it's just as dangerous as having anything politically aligned on your car these days so uh you're it is welcome. a great way to meet new people though I, if you want to do meet that, I, I'm, I'm kind of done. I'm kind of done meeting new people. I, I want to become a hermit, either in the mountains or on the ocean. Perf- yeah, maybe, maybe split my time. I don't really know, uh, but <laughs> you know, like I'll, I'll I'll be with my wife. I'll be I'll be with uh, my dog. Uh, I'll I'll be, I'll be with the spirits of all of my deceased pets because I like to think they follow me around. Oh oh, and I'll I'll, I'll be with you, the DK Vine audience. But uh, everybody else can go to hell. So fair enough. Uh, Twenty five dollars a month, the inner circle plus uh, other perks there. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, that, that's no, page. don't undersell that. That is the Discord server, Heil. The inner circle Discord server, where uh, where you can talk uh, to the DK Vine staff about relevant news of the day. Yeah, I spend you, a lot of time there. It's a good you, time. You, you can talk uh, talk with the guy who just said he hates people and wants to be a hermit. <laughs> good times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that's important right now because YouTube demonetized DK Vine because probably they think the conversation is another person's podcast that I, I was... That was the best theory we could come up with. Yeah, yeah. You, the, the, the fun thing about about infringing on something uh, on YouTube is that like they'll punish you for it and not tell you what you actually did or even what they think you actually did. Right, and, and unless unless you're an uh, obnoxious, successful YouTuber, you're not going to get any uh, make any headway uh, with it. So, right now, I'm yeah, trying about, to f- about ten thousand more subscribers, and I'll be there though. Yeah, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure it out right now, but it's uh, it's a source of stress. It's a source of 
demoralization. But you know what? I, I will per- persevere, Josh. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let the man hold me down, or the woman. I don't know who did the, what, what. I guess the algorithm is uh, genderless, so I'm not. I'm not gonna let. Right, what was Becky Lynch holding you down? What? I haven't heard this story. What? I made a reference to current wrestling. Nobody's oh. gonna get that one. No, no. Nobody watches wrestling anymore. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Uh, if, uh, if, if I, want, I should be the one apologizing. Actually. If you want to talk about WCW Megastar Disco Inferno, I could do that. For oh, hours. hell yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I don't. I, I have no idea what you just said. So, so uh, follow DK Vine on Facebook and Twitter and uh, join the DK Vine forum. Never been a better time to join, Josh. Never been a better time. DKVine.com slash forum, maybe. Uh <laughs> maybe <laughs> let, let me know because there's 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 some bad versions of that that send you to things you don't want to see let me just double check make sure i, I gave you the right one there yeah that works dkvine.com slash forum <laughs> that's the good one <laughs> i never remember because because we set up a, a fake one that sent you to an infected toe and peroxide and uh I, I it would be bad if i said join the dk vine forum and then i gave everybody the address and then they saw an infected toe and peroxide which it's still- i'm pretty sure that was that was slash forum slash interactive well, whatever you said it not me so uh i've anyway. i've 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 probably listened to the to season one of the conversation more than any more than anyone else on the planet oh yeah that that season's aged really well the, the sense of humor it has. in that up in that season yeah it's really really stayed it with the back, zeitgeist back yeah. when comics weren't afraid to be funny you know <laughs> <laughs> They couldn't. They couldn't uh, make blazing saddles today, Josh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we yeah we 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 we've grown up with the times, and I apologize for our uh, our ironic uh, sense of humor back then. Uh, anyway, hey hey, whatever. Moving on. Uh, don't forget the DK Vine, uh, the, the, the entity DK Vine, but mostly the conversation. <laughs> we have don't a hot- forget about DK Vine itself. No, no, no. We have a hotline, Josh, the DK Vine hotline, and you can call anytime 1-202-630-VINE, which translates to 8463 on a touchtone phone, but, you know, well, a touchtone, a touchtone phone, phone. Uh, whatever, any phone, it just, you know... If if you have a rotary phone, I guess it wouldn't work. But like, what? Who? Who would have that? Why would you try be trying to call us on a rotary phone? You know, given DK Vine's like proximity and constant obsession with the year 1995, I'm kind of surprised you guys don't have like a 900 number for like a dollar, like a dollar ninety nine per minute. Yeah, I tell you what, you if, can hear if, the, if the latest DK Vine me, scoops. If YouTube keeps hosing me. <laughs> I'll, I'll get the ghost of Mean Gene Okerlin to to, to run our one nine hundred number to get all the scoops on the Donkey Kong nonsense. Uh, all right, that's enough wrestling references. We're alienating. We're alienating what? the straights, Josh. We can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, anyway, you can call us anytime. Uh, if, if you want to call relevant to an episode we're doing, uh, stay plugged in with social media. We usually let people know the, the day of, at the very least, the morning of, but sometimes the day before if, if I'm feeling really ambitious. Of course, patrons will get an email notification about what the uh, show topic will be, but they can call in, give us your thoughts or ask us questions and bring up stuff you want us to address on that episode uh, if it's relevant to the topic and we'll we'll get around to it. If you just want to call us, well, we will listen to it. We do listen to it, but we usually save those for the call sack episodes. So if you just want to talk about anything related to the DKU or Rare or Platonic or Nintendo or whatever, you know, feel free. But don't be slighted if we don't take the call on an episode that has nothing to do with. Anyway, uh, also help us get Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa on the conversation for the big 20th anniversary spotlight episode for Mario Golf (parentheses Game Boy Color) this October. I want to get him on the show, Josh, because he's a big fan of RPG golf, and I feel like mm-hmm. this would be the time. If there's any time I'm going to get the president of Nintendo on the conversation. It's for the 20th anniversary of Mario Golf (parentheses Game Boy Color). Well, I would be like I would be like really interested to hear that episode because as, as it turns out, I do not know the rules to golf. You don't. No, I don't know you the don't. Rules. 
Um, I, I would recommend listening to that episode because we'll probably get into it a bit. Me, me and uh, Mr. Furukawa as we talk about golf. Um, that, that's going to be a good episode this October if it happens. But I need you. I need, I need the public to kind of will it. I, I, I need like you, what is that when you, when you make a board and you visualize like your dreams. I need you to Twitter do that hashtags. For me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so please, please help. Because I, I'm I'm fighting too many battles right now with with YouTube and and my my constant irritable bowels. So I I, I, I need your help with constant. Yeah, it's just oh my god, I just everything these days. Just, Never a moment of relief. I mean, I get moments of relief. I'm not on the toilet right now, Josh. <laughs> Anyway, I, I, I can't just call him up and be like, Shunti, which would be my nickname for him, Shunti. I'd be like, Shunti, you want to do the show? No, it's not going to happen. So, but but maybe, maybe you can will into being, or maybe you can ask him if you know him, please. Uh, finally, of course, hashtag bring back the spiders. I don't need to belabor that. All right. Uh, Josh, before, before I end due diligence, please plug your wares. Well, uh, so the, the DK Vine, uh, the DK Vine Discord server is twenty five dollars a month. But <laughs> as it turns out, you can get on the Geek Critique Discord server for fifteen. Come on, <laughs> do the smart thing. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, no, I I, I make a show call, on YouTube called the Geek Critique. Uh, we just wrapped up. Uh, well, <laughs> not just now, but uh, better part of like two months ago. Now <laughs> we wrapped up the Sonic Adventure season. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and well, uh, the Sonic Advance season is well underway. Uh, we've got the first two episodes of that recorded. That's 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 coming along nicely. Uh, you can get to all that at youtube.com slash TG Critique. Hey, yeah, that's great. You know, I watched your Sonic 06 video, and it depressed me. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty depressing thing for a Sonic fan to talk about, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I had no, it's, you know, I'm ignorant, as I just said. I'm ignorant about anything that doesn't relate to my very, very niche interest. And, you know, I, I've, I heard that this, this game was bad, but I just thought it was like Donkey Kong 64 bad. Like, oh, oh, yeah, it, it's, it's cluttered. It, it's not, it doesn't have like super elegant game design. I don't know what they're on about, but it, it's, it's probably not bad, bad. They're just probably being overly dramatic about it. Oh no, I was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember you saying that, like talking about how, like it made you realize how good the DKU has really got it because, yeah. like, the the very worst DKU games are just kind of mediocre. They're just kind of like maybe they're not what what the community necessarily wanted right then. Just, but you know, they're usually pretty competently designed games. Uh, in spite of that, but but not so with Sonic 06. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, do, yeah I mean, Don that, Kong, was, that was no Donkey Kong 64 is just a bit of a mess, but it's it's ambitious, but it's it's playable. Like you can play it to the very end and and not feel like you're like I don't know, like cheating fate somehow. Like it, it it's a game, and it, it's a it's a polished product. If just a little unwieldy and and lacking grace you know uh, <laughs> i think it would have been better though if if pauline had actually been there uh donkey kong had died at a had died in a very gruesome and over the top and melodramatic cutscene, and then pauline had kissed him to bring him back to life i'm that's all i'm saying that that was that was really the one thing that, D, that dk64 was missing mm-hmm. yeah yeah i, I but no uh, I, I appreciate that that was my, my uh my whole thought process with that episode was just that like People, this game is so easy to mock and so easy to laugh at. And I do enjoy doing that too. But right. it would be like, as somebody who, who you know, the Sonic series means to me what Donkey Kong and what the DKU means to you. And as to take it from that perspective and really like get real with myself about, what, about how much damage this did to the franchise's reputation, like even today, uh... Yeah, depressing episode, like you said. Yeah, so I, it kind of made me reevaluate how good like I have it, and, and Donkey Kong fans have DKU fans have it. So thank you, but I feel guilty at the same time. Like, oh, you know that 
that's what I'm taking from this, but it's it's more like just a, a reassuring like kind of thing, like 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 I don't know. It, it's it's like oh oh this horrible tragedy happened to these people I know. Thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I know some bad video games came out like 13 years ago. My yeah. God. <laughs> anyway, jo- Josh's videos are always super educational. And like like I've said, even if you're not really interested in the subject matter, if you're a fan of anything, if you are have an intense fandom towards any property in pop culture, you will enjoy his videos because that it's that shared enthusiasm we all have for something that will make you appreciate and and really be entertained by his stuff. So check. It I out. really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So Josh, let's let's let's, let's rewind a bit. That's another R word. Rewind. <laughs> so, aside from some cryptic tweets about Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, um, well, aside from some cryptic tweet tweets, and aside from Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze being released for the Switch last year retro studios has been a ghost since the wii u iteration of tropical freeze came out in february 2014 it's been five years since that game first came out (sighs) meanwhile rare has been very prominent since their rebranding at e3 2015 releasing rare replay that year and of course sea of thieves in March of last year. But ever since Sea of Thieves was first playable at E3 2016, people have been asking, well, what else are they possibly working on? So we'll we'll be getting into this on this episode because we know what Retro is now working on, but it's not anything anybody really thought for the longest time. And we know Rare might be working on something new right now, but we have no inkling of what that could be. So we're going we're gonna to be talking about what we know, about what we don't know. A little speculation, a little insider information that was leaked my way. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see where the conversation leads us. All right. Now, uh, you said that we don't have any inkling what Rare has been working on. You, I know you have some inside sources. Is that a hint that they're working on Splatoon Country? You know, I, I thought about making a Splatoon joke, but the thing is, I've already done that in the past, and I don't want to have to make a Splatoon joke every time I say inkling. It's not really something I want to make of my life, so mm-hmm. I, ju- I just decided to not, but you did it, so thank you for that. My my, my, my apologies. I'm, mm. I, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have gone there. It's all right. It's all right. Cut this part of the episode. Come ah, on. No, it's too much work. <laughs> make, a, I, make a note. It's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> so let's I, I know I just re- rewound but I'm going to re- rewind even, even further so Josh at E3 2013 that's when Nintendo revealed Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze Retro Studios then newest game and the Wii U follow up to 2010's Wii title Donkey Kong Country Returns uh, now I don't need to tell you that us DK fans were ecstatic that day uh you know especially with the news of playable dixie kong and then especially with the news that david wise would be returning to score it um that that was just a magical magical day for dk vine for the whole broader donkey kong fan community i got got that that was like what the the day they announced returns was pretty memorable the day they announced tropical freeze was kind of a slower build in enthusiasm and anticipation because it just kind of blindsided everybody that we already had a sequel for it and that it was coming. And then like, there's that disappointment at, Oh, they didn't bring back the Kremlins. Oh, well, but these new baddies look cool, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, well, Dixie's back. Well, that's great. That's great. That's great. And then David Wise just put us over the top and nothing else mattered for like a week. Um, yeah, you know, I, I would say that the, the comparing the announcement of Returns to Tropical Freeze, like, I was just as excited both times, roughly, mm-hmm. but in completely different ways. Because the thing about Tropical, the thing that made, that made Tropical Freeze's announcement so special is because being, like, a Nintendo fan and being, like, like keeping up with, like, the news and then what, what people were saying about the Wii U and, like, I just... I never, I never expected that to be it. I never expected that to happen because, 
Nint- like us outside of DK Vine, like Nintendo fans were all clamoring for Metroid, and I know that's what we're going to get into. Yeah. So yeah. that really just set it up as even more of a surprise to me. Yeah, and for me, I just assumed like returns would be done in one and then retro would be moving on to something else and uh and i don't know why i assume that because return sold so well uh it it i mean it it outsold all the metroid prime games so it's you know it's not like surprising that it did a sequel but i think even that outside like just the assumed knowledge that oh yeah they're not going to be doing another Donkey Kong that seeped into DK Vine too and and we were just like yeah they're not going to be doing Donkey Kong okay whatever um, and that's what that's what's kind of funny about it is because like you said if you look at it from I guess Nintendo's perspective if if we could have taken ourselves out of the bubble of the of Nintendo fandom like it it made so much sense for that to happen yeah I, I'm I'm removed enough from the bubble of the broader Nintendo fandom. So much so that I did not realize that while we were celebrating that day, that glorious day, they announced Tropical Freeze. Dixie Kong was back. David Wise was back. Such a great day. I didn't realize that the rest of Nintendo fandom, by and large, they were seething. They were livid. And I was oblivious to this for for a while. Um, Probably, I I, I assume I, I had some inkling of it that week but then like we, we were going to Bonnaroo that week and so there's this whole like oh I gotta gotta get ready to travel gotta get ready to get uh sunstroke gotta get ready to get very very <laughs> ill watching Paul McCartney perform so gotta get ready to scream Bonnaroo on the conversation for the next six months Bonnaroo Bonnaroo Bonna- you know I I only have a, a tiny inkling what Bonnaroo even is, ha, but I'm aware. But I'm aware of it because of this program. Uh, it, it's an experience that I I don't want to ever do again. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's it's just wallowing in your own filth for for a weekend, and that's fine if you like wallowing your filth. But I, I, I'm very hygiene oriented, Josh, and I I realize like I'm I'm a guy who loves nature. I go hiking all the time, but I'm not one to just. Stay do like uh, amongst the porta potties. I'm not. I, I, I don't enjoy that. That's not my idea of a good time. I, I like daily showers. Uh, if if my underarms don't have the the scent of deodorant every twelve hours, then we have a problem. You know, it's. I, I'm very much. Someone well, look, who... I, I I played Sonic Heroes the day it came out. I know what it means to wallow in filth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I yeah it, 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 yeah I, I I would have much preferred like seeing Paul McCartney perform fantastic that was great but after that like that that's all I needed out of the the whole weekend I I would have much rather stayed at home and just speculated about Tropical Freeze but yeah I I didn't realize like this was a controversy this was a controversy I I I just thought oh yeah people are gonna people are gonna be looking forward to this because how could they not it's a sequel to a platformer that was very well received not really taking stock of the whole broader situation with the Wii U because uh this whole should have been Metroid Gate uh it's kind of, I'm mean, sort of a meme uh in our community but. Uh, Metroid fans really, really wanted Metroid Prime 4 for a couple of reasons. One, there were Metroid fans, and I really, really wanted Metroid Prime 4. But <laughs> mo- moreover, uh, put upon Nintendo loyalist. I'm talking the, the Nintendo true and blue diehards that refuse to own an Xbox or PlayStation, either because it's out of their means or because they're so faithful to Nintendo that they just they just can't fathom it, right? And, you know, I, I, I'm very loyal to the, the DKU and to Rare and to, you know, Platonic and to this whole, like, weird little subculture that's kind of developed in and around DK Vine over the last 19 to 20 years. But, you know, so so I can relate to that um, from, from a, like, a intellectual distance like oh like 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 with your videos like oh i I can relate to that like i i'm not part of that but i understand it Um, when it comes to nintendo fandom i don't think that like when we were kids you know the and i guess uh, probably among kids even today yeah um 
the reason for fanboyism in those days was just that, like, you know, you could only, you were only going to be able to get so many consoles and so many games, um, at a time. So, you know, that's why you had Sega kids and you had Nintendo kids. Sure. I think nowadays it's more that, like, and and I'm saying this as somebody who, you know, I, I'm an omni-gamer. I play lots and lots of different stuff. But the bulk of what I'm really interested in does tend to come out of Nintendo. And I think that they're still, that like, this company is still, ma- like, has a very distinct style of game and has a very distinct approach to game making. Sure, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that, that as much as I love, like, my PC and my PS4... And my Xbox One, like, they don't get as much playtime simply because, like, not because I, I dislike the system or I'm a hardcore Nintendo loyalist, but just because there's not a, a, as much on them that interests me personally. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I, I understand it. Um, but the, the, the Nintendo loyalists were, were very downtrodden during this time period. 20, 2013... Uh, was not their era because the Wii U w- was taking a bit of a drubbing. It, it was it was uh, <laughs> it was on the ropes, uh, and it um it, it they they wanted a system seller for the Wii U. They they thought if we could only get a killer app on this like console, then that will turn around our fortunes. And I th- I mean it, it's it's kind of magical thinking. I understand it, but. I don't think one game would have really like moved the system at all. It's 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 just kind of trying to pin your hopes on whatever. And there there's this this persistent idea, this this concept. And I don't know if it's a misnomer or not. You would be more uh, knowledgeable about this, and you could tell me if I'm wrong here. But there, there's this idea that I think is a complete falsehood that Metroid is that game, is that franchise. That will, if if the, the broader public gets a whiff of it, then that's going to make Nintendo top dog. That's going to be their Halo, Metroid. We got Metroid, so if, you know, if only people, if only we have a Metroid Prime on this, then all of a sudden everything will turn around. And that, that's kind of what I, the sense I got back back then uh, in the should have been Metroid year of 2013 to 2014. But um, yeah, I think it was because the Wii U was just floundering, and because there was there had already been so many platformers, mostly Mario, uh, in such a short in- interim that uh, n- they they saw Tropical Freeze as just another one of those, and nothing that would move a system. And and Tropical Freeze wasn't a system seller. Nothing on the Wii U was a system seller. So you know, it's it's. I, 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 yeah, that's, met- that, I think, like, I've always thought that, I guess, let's say hypothetically, it should have been Metroid, that happened, like, Metroid Prime 4 actually came out in 2014 instead of Tropical Freeze. Yeah. Like, I do think that it would have sold, it probably would have sold a few more Nintendo fans who hadn't already picked up a Wii U. It would have sold. It would have sold like a couple more of of them than Tropical Freeze did. Simply, simply because Tropical Freeze was, like you said, another platformer, and most like a lot of people who that I think that was really as much of an issue as anything. Looking back, that the Wii U and you know like platformers are like one of my probably my favorite genre in gaming. So I was having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, Across the Cat Mario's and the Rayman Legends and the <clears throat> and even New Super Mario Brothers U, but like I think that it was just it was just way too much. Like it was way too many of those. But what's interesting is that what you really see early on for the first uh, let's say two years of the Wii of the Wii U's life cycle is Nintendo like making games and developing games and announcing games that had clearly been put in development with the intention and the the assumption that the Wii U would replicate the Wii's success in much the same way. Mm-hmm. That's why you got, like... like uh, The problem was the only people who ended up buying a Wii U were those hardcore Nintendo loyalists. Yeah. Um, who were not going to be interested in a game like Wii Fit U or Wii Sports... What was it? Re- Wii Sports Resort... Or, or, I can't even remember what the Wii Sports sequel on Wii. I, th- on the I think, Wii I think there's called. a Smash Ultimate stage for it, but I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 
So, and like, I think that Tropical Freeze was probably uh, like some part of that saying, here's one of the best selling, like, hardcore, like, core, well, not hardcore, as Nintendo's terminology goes, core Wii games. Let's make a sequel to that. Yeah. Yeah, th- th- there there was very little strategy in the Wii U release schedule, and I think we've seen more strategy with the Switch release schedule, very very much so. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's, it's why I'm so thankful Tropical Freeze for the Switch beat out the Switch version of Super Mario Brothers U. Um, it's just so fortunate for us because it, it may, means people actually gave it a shot this time around rather than writing it off. And 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 now, like you're getting all this critical praise for it, you're getting sales for it. It it's now considered uh, a classic or a modern classic. Um, so like we're we're past all of that drama. But yeah, back then it, it was it was definitely uh, a a, to- a very very like, troubling time if you were somebody who was looking forward to Tropical Freeze and and then this backlash against it. And <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know, like. People wanted a Metroid Prime 4, but another reason they wanted Metroid Prime 4 was because, and this is this is more from the Metroid faithful, it's because Metroid Other M kind of shit the bed. And, mm-hmm. and they wanted basically redemption. They wanted a, a, a palate cleanser after that. And, you know, I, I, I'm still not 100% like up on why other M is reviled as it is. I, I know a little bit more, you know, but it, it's, yeah, it, it basically just it, spend an entire hour watching my video on it. I did. I did. I did. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, 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 it reminds me if I can put myself on, in their shoes, it sort of reminds me of like Donkey Kong Jungle Beat when that came out, except Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is actually a very good game. It just, it was very wrong-headed in its approach and the way it was very dismissive towards uh, the Donkey Kong franchise as it had been built up over the last <clears throat> 11 years, you know, um, and, and yeah, I would, I would say that the, that Federation force Metroid prime Federation force is kind of an anal- is kind of analogous to what happened with, uh, with jungle beat and with Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts for that matter. Well, we'll talk about Federation Force, because I, I have my own thoughts on Federation okay. Force. But, uh, yeah, anyway, anyway, so, like I said, it's ignoring how well Donkey Kong Country Returns sold. It outsold all the Metroid Prime games. So, you know, to say, like, oh, you know, wh- why the hell is Nintendo doing this when they could they could have, you know, Metroid Prime 4? And, man, that, that, that was the system seller. I think that's 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 another bubble. That's that's a bubble of their own creation. That's that's a bubble that like doesn't really reflect reality. Metro Prime f- sold great. Don't get me wrong; it was, it was beloved, you know. But it, it's I, to, to think that it would have saved the Wii U. It, it would have diversified the Wii U, but by then it would have been too late. You know, it's the Wii U was already dead. There's there's no resuscitating that system. And and I guess another thing about that is. Making a Metroid Prime 4, like, if if Metroid Prime 4 had started development at the exact same time as Tropical Freeze did, it would have had, like, just by the basis of, I'm sure they wouldn't have wanted, like, like they wouldn't have wanted to make, like, Wii pointer controls be the only control option. So, I think a Metroid Prime 4, even in 2013, 2014, would have had to be much more of, like, a a game where they took things back to the drawing board and kind of did a lot of new things with it. Yeah. So I think what you'd have ended up with is a situation where, like, Retro probably would have spent... And and plus, you know, by then, most of the Metroid Prime development team was no longer even at Retro. Right. So I think, you'd get, <laughs> I think you'd get a situation where, like, a Metroid Prime 4 that was started... That they started working on back then still might not have come out until very, very late into the Wii U's life. Yeah. Yeah, these things take time, people. They <laughs> just... uh, I don't know. Yeah, I. The, the thing is, definitely, I... definitely, it was it was never gonna like save the Wii U. It was never gonna turn the fortunes around. And the thing for the is, Wii Ret- U. like 
Retro made Good. three of them. Retro made three Metroid Prime games. And, and then, you know, it, and then to say, like, within, you know, a decade of, of them making three of those. Oh, and now get back to the drawing board and make make a fourth one. Well, I, I don't know. Like, that, that's another thing I, I, I want to kind of save towards later in this episode. But the, the whole notion And think that- about this. They, they, they made three Metroid Prime games in the amount of time that's passed between... Tropical Freeze's release, and now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Right. Uh, the, the, just the whole notion that I'm entitled to an endless number of sequels of this franchise I like, and that's all this team can work on, and I, I will be quite displeased if they do anything else. I, I, I just don't like that mentality. I've really, as I've gotten older, I realized the fallacy in that and how how wrong-headed that that notion is like i'm somebody who wants a continual stream of donkey kong games i'm somebody who who would love a new banjo game don't get me wrong josh don't get me wrong but i don't know it's it's just like oh retro should just be the metroid prime studio no because then we would have been deprived of two awesome platforming games and, and whatever else they might you know be able to cook up so i i want to see what retro is capable of and i don't like i as much as I want a third Donkey Kong Country game from them, I wouldn't want them just to make Donkey Kong Country games forever either. So, <sighs> I don't know. Anyway. Like, I think I think what's important is that, like, the developers get to make something that excites them and that they'll yeah. have and that they'll have fun making and that they exactly. want to make and that they have a creative spark for. And Passion I has totally got to go understand ways. why after five straight years of pure of pure Metroid Prime development, <laughs> you might want to break from that for a while. Right. And you know, through through all of this, it, it seems like things were made worse, maybe, uh, because uh, it, Nintendo sort of fed into this a little bit. They sort of, if not encouraged it, they sort of either trolled the Metroid fans or... Gave them a little bit of a wink. I, I don't know what it was, but later that year at the VGX, uh, formerly the Spike Video Game Awards, uh, the, the one hosted by Joel McHale, where they reveal Cranky Kong as a playable character for Tropical Freeze, uh, Reggie, Reggie fils wore a Metroid pr- pin on his, on his suit jacket while they were... Uh, showing off Cranky Kong, so it was kind of like, what are you, what are you trying to say there? Like, are you trying to say, yeah, I know this, 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 this is a disaster. We should have made Metroid, or, or are you just say like, haha, fuck you? Like, wh- <laughs> just people read so much into that, like it, it, there was, it was a Dead Sea Scrolls, and I, I don't know, it just, just made tension so much high, higher between the two fan bases, Donkey Kong and Metroid. And, and when when you know you're running a Donkey Kong website during that time, it's it's just you kind of had a target on your back, and and you know we weren't entirely mature either. <laughs> what? No, what? I mean we we were still don't kind debase of, yourself like that, Heil. We were still kind of growing up a little bit, and we uh, we we sort of like egged them on just a bit. You know, and neener, neener, look. If this neener. whole situation had been going on like circa two thousand four, there would be there would be some photoshops. There there would be some <laughs> some things that you would be ashamed to have on your web server. Oh, absolutely. Now. Like like at least we were mature enough to try to like try to be like ras- rational about it, you know. But it it, it was. It... It got a little bit old when people were trolling on the forum, like people were registering just to shit talk Tropical Freeze, and nah. Anyway. Well, I, I do want to say because you know you're you're having me on here as somebody who's who is pretty well versed in in the Metroid fandom, so I kind of want to like play devil's advocate here and and sort of and sort of give some insight into that perspective. I guess the the the, the way that the way that they would have seen it is this. From 2002 until 2007, the Metroid fandom experienced something very similar to what the Donkey Kong Country fandom would have experienced from, like, 1994 to circa 1998, when, and particularly 94 and 96, like the very late era, Play It Loud, Super Nintendo era, yeah. when that was when that franchise gained so much more importance 
and reverence and respect and 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 not just respect but also like like Nintendo was pushing it really really hard lots and lots of new games were coming out all the time and for other M to just come in and 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 put and put an end to that for years um like they're going to look back on that time and and on that era with the same kind of kind of nostalgia that we do for for play it loud so I think that that really fed into, and it's kind of it's kind of the same thing that you see with with rare fandom now, who you know are are very people who feel slighted that rare is making Sea of Thieves and 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 focusing so hard on that and and not not making Banjo Kazooie because they want to return to that era. Yeah, yeah, I I, I understand that. Yeah, and maybe it's because I we were. Th- through that already and we we kind of came out on the other side of it and I, I i think you know maturing is a two-step process it's it's one just getting older but it's also having experience and having like the knowledge of oh no th- these things happen this is the way it goes having and then being able to have foresight then for the future and and so you know yeah you, you kind of have to go through it. We already went through our growing pains, and I guess they were going through that post the Metroid Prime era. Well, yeah, and, yeah. You know, yeah. And and especially the Met, especially those Metroid fans who did sort of come on board and get into the series, you know, during the Metroid Prime era. You know, that's that was going to be very, very close. Like what they were feeling right then was very close to what you guys were feeling, uh, probably like in the early two thousands when everybody was seemed to be turning on Donkey Kong and turning on Rare. But the, the only the only difference is I don't think anybody ever turned on Metroid so much well no yeah it, it was still very much a, a critical darling where there was none of this retroactive justification well actually those games were never good to begin with good good riddance rare we don't need you um so th- there's none of that so you know i i <laughs> it, you know well, it, if it, we just want to sit here and play who had it worse Hile, we can no i I'm or we just, can try to relate to each other i'm just thinking it's quite remarkable <laughs> we turned i like the donkey kong fan base turned out as well adjusted as we did when we had so much stacked against us <laughs> like <laughs> yeah true uh uh anyway uh but yeah, th- through all of this drama uh tropical freeze was released in february 2014 5 years ago uh, to, oh my god! To depress. Little tangent here. Little yeah. tangent here. I got a comment the other day from somebody who said that they were that they grew up playing Tropical Freeze. <laughs> my you, goodness! You don't grow up playing Tropical Freeze. You're still growing up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, let's say you were let's say you were 12 when that game came out. You're 17 now. You're still growing up. Yeah, Stop but it. but when you're 17 and you're looking back on on your life when you were 12, it's going to seem like a really really long time. When I was 17, I was definitely afraid of becoming an adult. I didn't want it, so I was I was like, "No, I'm still a kid. What are you talking about? Fuck you. I I am not <laughs> I am not a young adult. What is this young adult? Why are these books being marketed towards me as young adult? No, I'm a child. I'm a wee little baby man. Goo goo gaga. Is I like I and you know what? Look, now that I've been an adult for several years, that was the right attitude Suffer. to have, Josh. Being an adult sucks. You don't want, like, the only good thing about being an adult is you can buy alcohol and uh, you can drive wherever you want. And, you know, like, you, you can be just <laughs> a, as much of a slob as you want so long as your wife allows it. But it, it, that, those are the only benefits. Being a kid is awesome. Savor it. Hold on to it, children. Because it, <laughs> like there are taxes, and then there's all this like insurance you have to get. Like what? What does this even mean? I don't understand it. They never explained it to me. <sighs> Hi, if you want to talk for a little while after the podcast is over, no, I'm here for you, man. It's fine. It's just it, it's I. It was the right attitude. And anybody who was growing up when Tropical Freeze came out is still growing up today end of the discussion um anyway yeah so yeah when, when it came out in february 2014 it got some good reviews but a lo- it was kind of lukewarm reception because of the metroid controversy GameSpot infamously had just a terrible review that they then pulled and and 
put back up and gave it like a one point higher score, but it was still like in the sixes. It's like completely ludicrous. And just, just yeah, that that was that was definitely the 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 most standout example of just just blatantly like giving a shitty review to a game because it wasn't the game you wanted it to be. Yeah, just you know, and as as icky as the whole idea of you know, well, the, the, this video game journalism doesn't have much, much ethics because that that's tied into this whole other thing that people used to anyway but um despite that yeah just like are you are you kidding me there's no way this is a professional review but you know there's that the tropical freeze did sell like around a million copies or so when it came out but it was still lukewarm tepid reception all around uh kind of like paul and linda mccartney's ram when it came out eventually of course you know it's considered a classic now much like tropical freeze is but we had had to earn it uh, I know exactly. I, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about, Josh. So it's um, anyway. Uh, almost immediately, though, the internet started speculating about what Retro was working on next. Like immediately, Tropical Freeze was out. Okay, well, what what what's Retro doing now? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> no rest for the weary. Uh, so, of course, us. Donkey Kong fans, we were, we were hoping for maybe a third Donkey Kong Country game from them, you know, because everything has to come in trilogies. You can't just have two of something. What's a duology? That's nothing. No, they're, 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 this is this is an incomplete uh, set of things that exist. It, it's bugging all of our OCD. We we need a third game, but we also knew rightfully so that it it wouldn't be the case it there was no way that was going to be their next game after the uproar and upheaval and then tepid response to it 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 wasn't gonna be the case best case scenario we would see maybe a 3d donkey kong game because uh, michael kelbao and um uh, tanabi they they both like hinted that maybe you know that's where they would take it next and then this was around the same time we had all of those Diddy Kong racing sequel rumors. So, you know, maybe Retro would be doing that. Uh, but the ephemera in which, in which the conversation was born, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag, I believe in Kevin Callahan. Not so much anymore, but, you know, it was a good hashtag for a while. Wore you that can, hashtag you've grown out. so much, Kyle. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we, like, I, I knew deep down, like... If, Retro would be raked over the coals if they did another Donkey Kong game next. So, best case scenario, somebody else like a monster would, would take it over, and and Retro would move on to something else. Maybe Retro would one day return to Donkey Kong, but th- their next game would 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 probably not be Donkey Kong. I thought it'd be a new IP. I thought, or they would take on a new Nintendo franchise because at that point people were also like holding up Retro as the the. the the studio that takes in orphan Nintendo franchises. And and so there's all the, all these rumors like, oh, maybe they'll do Star Fox. Oh, you know, Retro should do Zelda. Retro Retro should do Zelda, Josh. <laughs> um, you know, like it's, it's not like Retro could do anything original, you know, or any, any of their own ideas. No, Retro has to do this pre-existing <laughs> Nintendo franchise. End of discussion. But it should be Metroid. So, June well, not- I mean, I think oh. I, I think that retro would like retro is it's very appropriate that retro did end up working on the Donkey Kong Country series because I do think they they've ended up sort of occupying the position the the same position that Rare once did in taking Nintendo's franchises that tend to appeal more to Western gamers and making like uh, understanding the appeal of them. Sure. And I, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. It's just that there aren't many franchises like that that Nintendo has besides Metroid and Donkey Kong. I, you know, maybe you can make the case like Punch Out, but that's not really like this this perennial like undying yeah, franchise. Yeah, no, I know. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's it, it, you know. I, I the the Wii that. version came out ten years ago, and I don't know what else you would do with it or where else you would take it. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't like tying retro to this concept. But this is what retro does. I, I sure. think you know it, it's not fair to the creative talent at the studio. So June 9th, twenty fifteen, nearly a year and a half after Tropical Freeze's initial release, 
and and after Retro did, you know, the the appropriate rounds for that game, publicity, press, what what have you, they tweeted a very cryptic tweet on on the Twitter on the Twitter machine. They said, "Can you dig it?" And then they linked to Nintendo's E3 site. Now, we all took this to mean, "Oh, Retro is going to show a game at E3 2015." This is going to be Logical. exciting. Yeah, right? Can you dig it? It's going to involve shovels or maybe uh, 90s wrestling superstar Booker T. M- oh, may- man. I was I was waiting. I was waiting to make that one. <laughs> you know, if you, <laughs> you if beat you, me to it, if you weren't here, Josh, I would not make that reference. But you are here. So I made it. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, but uh, nothing came from it. And it, it was weird. Uh, it was surprising. Um, that, that was the first E3 that DK Vine officially attended in person. Uh, you know, not counting the times we sent Ozzy Ben or Dick Cheney, of course, Helmos the Dreadfully Evil. That was the first of E3 course. that uh, I was there, Chad was there. And we, we were pretty confused about what Retro was up to and why the Nintendo showing at E3 2015 sucked so bad. <laughs> it was Star Fox Zero and... There, there was that that Zelda game, like where the the links made of totem pole, or they weren't really links though. They were mm-hmm. like it was like the Hyrule, but not. Uh, and then there was Skylanders with Donkey Kong, and, and that was kind of it. There's maybe a Yoshi game, the, the yarn Yoshi something, but it it, it wasn't. Yeah, a- that, that was that rough period where Nintendo knew that the Wii U was like was getting ready to ramp down the Wii U and didn't and didn't see much point in putting too many more irons in the fire there but was like still over a year away from revealing anything about the Switch yeah so and even a year later even at E3 2016 like you know they they only showed off Breath of the Wild that was the one game they had there that day but that was for the immersive experience weekend. Josh it wasn't because they had absolutely nothing else to show it was because they wanted a completely immersive experience at E3 of course of uh, course and of course you know Chad and I didn't really have much time to like dwell on oh oh where's retro because that was you know we 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 met up with Rare for the first time, uh, Platonic, had dinner with Grant Kirkhope, you know, all sorts of crazy shit happened. So we, we were just, you know, kids in Became a candy corporate store. corporate chills, exactly. Yeah, that that is when Microsoft started handing us bags full of money. And why am I complaining about the YouTube demonet- demonetization again? <laughs> why am I doing that, Josh? Because I'm clearly a millionaire with my monocle <laughs> and my, my cigar... My, my cigarette holder like audrey hepburn or the penguin and I'm, I'm just like sitting here being all fancy twirling my vanity cane life is good with my millions i, I mean basically microsoft has 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 given both has given you an easy life and they've given knock from off of minecraft an easy life mm. you, you'll never have to work again yeah no except this this is grueling work doing this show <laughs> I'm getting the conversation sweats, Josh. That the the weird the weird sheen you get on your on your face, and, and you know I told you how hygiene oriented I am, so I want to go wash mm-hmm. my face as soon as this episode is over. I feel disgusting right now. I feel completely unsexy, and I want to be sexy, Josh. I got to be sexy at all times. And you can do that with Microsoft approved cologne. That's right. You can. <laughs> Oh, God, help me with this. I'm not the best at improv. That's all right. That's all right. I would have also accepted uh, you singing the Shawn Michaels theme song, but that's fine. Uh, So. I'm not your boy toy. The only thing is I don't want to bald like him because, man, man, old age hit him hard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he's he's completely bald now. I've got my Kennedy hair and I'm never parting with it. So, uh. This E3, though, besides us becoming complete and utter shills that, that have no credibility, this was also the E3 where I met the uh, enigmatic DK Vine source Dave Throat for the first time. And, and Dave Throat, very much like like Watergate, just uh, just you know approaching us in a, in a parking garage, uh, Dave Throat uh, was the one that told us back then that David Wise was working on on a project for Nintendo. Didn't say what, but just said, hey, just so you know, David Wise is currently working with Nintendo for something. Oh, really? 
B real, did you meet him in that in that infamous bathroom meeting at the urinals? Oh, that would be great. I I, I would have already shared that if that were the case, Josh. I would have already I, mm-hmm. I would have already. Of course, the thing is, then that would have said like what gender Dave Throat is, and uh, you know, because mm. if I met because because if Dave Throat's a woman, then what's Dave Throat doing in the men's urinals? That's that's mm. weird. Maybe she's just a weirdo. Maybe. All right. So anyway, uh. Seeing as how we just came off Tropical Freeze and Dave Wise doing the uh, the music for that, uh, one of my assumptions was that maybe Wise was scoring Retro's new game and uh, the the Can You Dig It game, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, you know, so yeah, it's Drill like, oh. Dozer. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, maybe it it is Diddy Kong Racing. Maybe Callahan is right, and it's a Diddy Kong Racing game because, of course. Bring back Dave Wise to do Diddy Kong Racing, and maybe they're racing like, like construction equipment. I, I don't know. You know, you, you, your mind goes to places. So at the same E3 though, Josh, uh, and I realize this is just one big historical wank fest, but I'm I'm setting up con- context is key. I, I I know I'm I'm like Rachel Maddowing the hell out of this episode right now, but I'm I'm setting up the context for this. Uh, no, t- no, I get it. I, I, it always kind of bugs me when I spend like the first ten or fifteen minutes of an episode setting up the historical context and talking about the the state of the industry when this game was released and the circumstances that led to it being the way it is. And then I get a comment like, "The video, the actual video starts at nine forty eight. Like, no, this is important. The thing is, this is season seven of the conversation. You know, we're not going to be talking about the actual topic to well in an hour in into it so i i I trust our audience is on board with us uh Mm -hmm. but but also i feel like this is important because given what we know now i really want to hit all of these historical beats because we've we've got to know where we were to know where we're going josh looking back to see where we stand you might say yeah yeah that that's that's some wise words Given we're talking about Dave, Dave, uh, for fuck it. Uh, so Metroid <laughs> Prime Federation Force was was announced at this E3. I said this E3 sucked so bad. Uh, th- this is the game that really again rankled the uh, the nerves of so many. Uh, this this was a 3DS game developed by Next Level, and people hated it. Man, they like people were full on. Walking the streets nude, throwing their duty. This was how angry they were. It, it was a complete, like, complete apocalyptic scenario. There were riots. Cities were burning. I'm pretty sure governments collapsed during this E3. Uh, this is also the E3 Trump announced he was running for president. So there might be some correlation there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... <laughs> he, looked at, he looked at that and said, in a world where Metroid Prime Federation forts could exist... Why not? You know, tr- tr- can you dig it? He says he's going to bring back the coal jobs. I'm just saying there's there's this unseen correlation. I need to get Rachel Maddow on this because I feel like there there this is unseen. Like calling Robert Mueller. What is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're you're going to get hacked by the Russians again, man. Tread now, lightly. I love I love I love Russia. Tetris. Vodka. Gorky. Uh, like they make the best James Bond villains. Russia, the Kremlin, <laughs> the Kremlin, Kremlins. The, so, Vladimir Putin is not going to listen this deep into an episode, man. I think you're good, honestly. I I think I think Putin listens to every episode. It, it's it's <laughs> at least at least placates my ego. To think he does. Shirtless, of course. Of course, I think everybody mm-hmm. should listen to the shirtless. It's really the, the best way to listen to it. Uh, I mean, so, you record it on the toilet, so why not? No, I'm not recording on a toilet, Josh. I'm keeping it <laughs> sexy, Josh. I'm keeping it sexy. <laughs> now, I, 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 I viewed this outrage at E3. Yeah, when you're at E3, you're kind of in, again, a bubble, to use that uh, nomenclature, like terminology. But... You, you know, you are, when you're physically at E3, it's kind of hard to know what's happening at E3 because you're in this E3 bubble. It's the weirdest thing. But um, I, I was keeping my ground, my ground to the ear. I was keeping my ear to the ground just enough to know 
Like, hey, people hate this game. And I remember thinking, like, really? Like, wh- this is pretty, like, just innocuous. It's pretty just there. It's not anything to really, like, raise the, uh, like, angry meter of anybody out there. <laughs> I know I know, Metroid Other M was this huge, uh, you know, just blow to the fan base, but... Everyone was kind of like acting like they were owned a new traditional Metroid Prime ASAP and that anything else that came out with the Metroid branding was just totally unacceptable. And we brought up like King of Swing and Jungle Beat earlier and this is what this reminded me of. I like I if other M is Jungle Beat then Federation Force was kind of like King of Swing or Jungle Climber. It was just like okay, it's just this harmless spin-off title. It's not, it's clearly not anything like replacing a genuine main console title Metroid game, but that's, I mean, yeah, and you know, I guess, I guess that is the difference between that and something like, uh, like Nuts and Bolts was for Banjo fans, because Nuts and Bolts was very much portrayed as like the next Banjo game. It was even announced that way, uh, without going into the vehicle aspect. And that is a big part of the reason why, (laughs) why it upset people so much of the time. Yeah, I don't know. I I just remember it. Was, it just seemed like a, a a tempest in a teapot. It just seemed silly to me, and I like I I don't want to say like oh well you know I I'm the enlightened Donkey Kong fan, and these Metroid fans they just they just they just refuse to accept any good news. Oh, they got a new game, and no, oh, they they're shitting on it. No, oh. like I I get why they were upset, but I just think it was a lot of drama for nothing. Like. Okay, it's a Metroid game that you might not have any interest in playing. I'm sure there were some Metroid fans who were delighted by it, but uh, of course you just heard the negative reaction. And Nintendo like noticed the negative reaction, like very much. Like I think the YouTube um, trailer or whatever was like downvoted dramatically, and it, it was like one of those things where like that was a story in and of itself. How badly it got downvoted on YouTube. Um, but at the same time, like, like what, once again, be like playing, like being the Metroid fan here. And to be clear, you know, I'm a, I'm still a very new Metroid fan compared to a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, you're still growing up. I've, yes, <laughs> I've, I've never, um, I mean, I've played a little bit of Federation Force, but you know, I think the biggest, the, the one big thing about that was not just that it was like a Metroid spinoff. Or that it was sort of in a di- in a very different genre. It also didn't help that, of course, it came at a time when, like, there not like it had been so, so many years since the last like real Metroid game. It had been so like that 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 is where it's where the comparison with uh, nuts and bolts can be drawn. That people had been waiting for a new Metroid game for a very very long time, and then this is announced. And it's not even remotely, like, in the same genre. Like, the reasons that people that Metroid appeals to people uh, cannot really be found in, 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 like, very high concentrations in Federation Force. Uh, it's a very, uh, like, it's more of a multiplayer mission-based first-person uh, shooting game with, sure. with you know, with, with, like, touch controls. Uh, necessitated by being on the 3DS, although you can also use the new 3DS and and get somewhat more traditional controls. But you know, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. So I do like I do understand where the vitriol for that came from. I think it's the kind of thing like basically, if you imagine a scenario to to relate it to the, to the Donkey Kong universe mm. where. Like, Jungle Beat was announced. Like, let's say Jungle Beat comes out and, and Donkey Konga comes out, but also you were still getting more traditional Donkey Kong Country games alongside those releases. Um, I don't think that they would have, that they would have ever attracted the kind of vitriol that they did. And in much the same way, because now, you know, Samus Returns has come out, because we know Metroid Prime 4 is on the way, if a game like Federation Force was announced now and came out now, it never would have that kind of that kind of reaction. Sure. Like, you didn't see Metroid Prime Pinball getting crucified back in the day. Exactly. So, yeah. You're, you're right there. And again, you know, it, it, it all comes with experience and... 
we we were quite child childish when it came to Donkey Konga, and it was because it was the first major Donkey Kong game post Rare, and we thought, oh my god, this is what you're doing with the franchise. Look, look, everybody, freak out! Walk, walk the streets nude. Throw our duty. <laughs> this is it. Like this, this is the end times. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. I understand. This is this is what the Metroid fandom was working through. What we had already worked through. You know, uh, a solid. 12 years before or whatever um i i, I understand that completely uh, it's just i i guess th- w- with the benefit of hindsight i'm like what wh- why why is everybody treating this like a big deal it's gonna work itself out in the meantime you get this game try it you might like it if you don't have no interest whatever but you know that's again that 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 comes with with age yeah, and I guess and I guess that's like what you, what you said right there. And insurance. the worry with Donkey. <laughs> oh boy, I, I got to stop this. I got to <laughs> got to cut. Hi, I'll come back to me. I'm all right. I'm all right. So I guess that's I guess that is the thing though. Like it's not just that. Oh man, like Donkey Konga is 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 not what I would want out of a Donkey Kong game. It's also that fear that this is that, that like if this is successful, I, I guess it's just like. This is all that Nintendo sees Metroid as now. Yeah. Is this, and that, and that's the fear right there. That, that, like, oh god, what if this game is successful? Or even if it's not, what if all we get is like little little dinky spinoff games like this from now on? Like nobody wants to become F Zero, you know? <laughs> right. Oh jeez, poor F Zero. <laughs> I know. I feel so bad for them. <sighs> no. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I think, like, my perspective, especially, like, look, we got K. Rule back. You know, there, there are big plans for the Donkey Kong f- franchise. You know, R- Rare is thriving. We got Platonic. Like, there, there's so many good things happening in the Donkey Kong universe fandom, if you want to call it that. Um, even though it's a mostly made-up con- construct by us. But there's so many good things happening that I... And I feel like we willed those to happen, not through negativity, but through positivity and and getting the fuck over our angst and uh, and then when we finally did that then things started turning around it's kind of like you know when you want to be in a relationship and you're so depressed and cynical about it you're not you're not going to attract anybody but when you finally like embrace who you are and and like are are happy that's when things turn around for you so I don't know. Like that that's that's my perspective. But that's that's like besides the point. Why why are we belaboring this? I don't know. Um but no, I, I, I totally understand <laughs> it's it it's funny, but I totally understand why the an apt comparison for people like us to talk about like oh, our favorite video game franchises will be getting good new entries compared to Meeting the love of your life. I get that. Look, all I'm saying is I, I went into therapy. Uh, I realized mm-hmm. I liked myself. And, and then I started keeping it sexy all the time. And then, I, and then like, I, I had many, many, many opportunities. And it, it was like night and uh, day. Heil. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't need to know about your many opportunities. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know, though. Like, Keep it to yourself, man. So, and it's the same thing with, like, getting a character in Smash Brothers. The exact same thing. <laughs> I'm just saying, we're married to K. Rule, but hey, we'll see what happens with the fighters pass. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. You know, Mich- speaking, I'm just joking, Michelle. You know, speak- just joking. <laughs> speaking of getting lucky, yeah. This whole this whole situation is kind of like looking back on it in in retrospect. I don't think I think it's only with this kind of historical context that I can kind of appreciate like the magnitude of this, I guess. Yeah. But it's kind of fascinating that, you know, from from the time that Returns was announced and, you know, you you and Chad came back to DK Vine, from then until rough until Tropical Freeze, like the the sort of like center the, the center the central focus of the site was on, you know, these new Donkey Kong Country games coming out. Mm-hmm. And right at the time, just you this is what I mean by getting lucky. Right when re- right right when Retro said, "Can you dig it?" and then promptly fell off the off the planet for five <laughs> years, Rare comes back yeah. at the same E three. Rare and Platonic, 
Yeah. Yeah, true. It, that that spring. And, and yeah. the Renaissance kicks up. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's... It, it, it's amazing, like, the, the, the time. And, I mean, that's that's the beauty of DK Vine, that we always have something to talk about. Uh, even if there's, like, nothing in the works for Donkey Kong, Rare, or you know, or Rare alum are always active now. Uh, and, and if things go quiet over there, then, oh, hey, Donkey Kong's, you know, all of a sudden has this new game. It, it's, it's always been the case. It's, we are the most, like, versatile fan base because we, <laughs> we, we always have something... <laughs> uh in the works so uh you, you might you might scoff at like what what do you mean okay so banjo and conquer were introduced in diddy kong racing and what's this thing about the fish and hold on tricky but it works it works for us <laughs> no my my fiance the other day i was i was talking about this about this show and about dk vine and she was like wait so he really doesn't play anything except d except these dku games so i pulled up your switch profile yeah <laughs> I was like, "Yep, see, these are all exclusively DKU games." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's... By the way, I am I am proud and happy with with how much you seem to have been enjoying Smash. Oh, I love Smash. Smash Ultimate's it, <laughs> it it it's the magic is back. It, if I feel like I felt like when I was playing Melee, just that, and and I, and I didn't feel that with Brawl. I liked Brawl, but I didn't feel it with Brawl, and I didn't. I definitely mm-hmm. didn't feel it with uh, Four. So like, this is just. This is basically like, oh, it's the early 2000s again. I'm going to frost my tips, Josh. I'm going <laughs> to... Keeping it sexy, yeah. Well, I think that's the antithesis of keeping it sexy, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah. Uh, gross Soul Patch. Were Soul Patches big back? It feels like Soul Patches should be a thing back then. Uh, anyway, uh, so 2016 rolled in. And we had a new rumor a few months before that year's E3. Uh, now, uh, Kensuke Tanabe, we already mentioned, uh, he, he was like producer uh, for all the Metroid Prime games and returns in Tropical Freeze. Basically, the, uh, the guardian of retro from Nintendo of Japan. Basically, keeps them in check, keeps them uh, on point. Um Tanabe, he and Retro, it seemed, were no longer on good terms. And th- this was a rumor. I don't know how much we got into it uh, on the show, if at all, because it seemed like we didn't have enough to go on. And I don't really like, uh, I don't really like talking too much about like ugly spats that might be happening. Like we're we're not. We're not Gawker or whatever with, with with Hulk Hogan's penis. We don't we don't do that here <laughs> on the conversation. DK Vine. We're, we celebrate appropriate these. name for them though. Yeah, well, we celebrate these games. We celebrate the people who make these games. So I don't really like getting into like salacious rumor mongering. But this is a rumor, and the way the um, the history then played out after this, I would say the rumor is true. So this was uh, reported, and, and I'm just going to read this verbatim. Um, from from the contemporary report from early 2016, <sighs> Nintendo's Kensuke Tanabe has long been established or associated. Cry, cry, I can't even read verbatim. Has long been associated <laughs> with Retro Studios. While working with the company, Tanabe acted as producer (parentheses or co-producer) on all of its games, in the Metroid Prime and Donkey Kong Country titles. Now, however, the two sides are allegedly no longer on good terms, according to a report from Liam Robertson. I I, I think he's from Oasis. Uh, Here's Mm -hmm. one excerpt from Robertson's report. Last year, I was investigating Tanabe with regards to this. This involves speaking to a number of developers who had worked alongside him. The way in which they all described Tanabe's directorial style was fascinating, their words build up a portrait, in my mind, of a Gordon Ramsay-esque figure who strived for perfection and berated anything short of it. It's difficult for me to fully convey my impressions of him without explicitly detailing the antidote shared with me in confidence, which could compromise those involved, but I will try my best to elaborate. The majority of those I spoke to about their experiences with Tanabe told tales of how he would quite often explode with great passion. Ugh. 
uh, on certain designers <laughs> when one of them either made what he perceived to be wait, a mistake. Wait, wait a minute. You're reading verbatim. Was the uh in the report? No, I was just imagining Bumper from Diddy Kong Racing for completely unrelated reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> what he perceived to be a mistake or boldly challenged a creative decision of his. None of these employees spoke of the producer begrudgingly, however. On the contrary, they described him as a competent creative creative and leader, albeit a fiery personality. If that makes him sound a bit like J.K. Simmons, J.K. Simmons character from Whiplash, because this is 2016 and I guess that was a contemporary reference, that's not completely off the mark, minus the hurling of furniture and general psychological torment. After working with Tanabe on Tropical Freeze, some employees at Retro were apparently unhappy. Retro management appealed to NCL about the situation and also asked for more autonomy and freedom. Nintendo did allegedly res- respond to some of Retro's requests. Tanabe was removed, but a new staffer from NCL took over his role. The portion of Robertson's report is less certain, though the producer in question might be Yoshio Sakamoto. Sakamoto obviously has had a huge role in the development of the Metroid series. Still, that doesn't necessarily mean Retro is creating a new Metroid entry. Sakamoto was also involved with uh, Tomodachi Life. Is that how you pronounce it? I've, I believe so. Yeah. I've never actually said it, I don't think. And spoke in 2014 <laughs> about interest in making new experiences as opposed to traditional games. Okay, so the end verbatim. Um, this left us wondering what that meant for the weird restrictions placed on the Donkey Kong Country duology from Retro, such as the lack of familiar characters sans a few chosen ones. And if Tanabe... So I, I, I do have to ask this. Yeah. Um... Because I don't remember hearing about this at the time. Oh, you don't? Like, where do, where where did this report originate from? Uh, through several, like, rumor sites. And uh, mm. I, I forget, like, who, if any of the big sites uh, reported on it. But it, it was basically, like, bouncing around um, rumor mills with, with varying levels of credibility. But um, it, it, sure. it's, it seems to be confirmed in so much that Tanabe did leave retro and and Mm uh from from what we know was his next project which was metroid prime 4 so it's all kind of hearsay and conjecture and it's the type of stuff i don't normally like to get into on the conversation but i think now now that we're like past this point in history we can say okay well this allegedly happened and you know was Tanabe responsible for like the the lack of love shown to so many classic rare characters like Brash Bear or you know uh, Snide the Weasel? Who's to say? I I don't know, but uh, you know. It, but we can say it in any case that he did leave Retro around this time. Yes. Yeah. He. he, he or or rather, it like after the development of Tropical Freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Retro is like okay. get out of here. And he was like, fine. And and then they slammed some doors. Uh, so. <laughs> anyway, you know, so I, I remember hearing these rumors and I thought, you know, I, I didn't want to, like, think the worst of Tanabe uh, in this alleged report. You know, he's he's Gordon Ramsay or, or Mr. Whiplash. But uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I was like, OK, well. Any work environment, a- any working environment is is bound to create tension and hostility. Happened with the Beatles, Josh. And and I, I don't hold any ill will towards any of the Beatles for the breakup, even though it was mostly John's fault. I don't do it. It's fine. Um, but, you know, that's not my place as a fan to say, oh, Tanabe, shame on you. I, I, I take the, the, this side. Now, if I'm a fan of these people, I'm just going to be a fan of them. And they can have their own interpersonal issues, whatever. It, it, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna bother me. This doesn't bother me. So, you know, whatever. Ten, okay. So, but, but maybe Tanabe leaving Retro will be a good thing. Maybe Retro will now have full creative freedom to do things how they want. Maybe this will mean unparalleled, you know, levels of success and and creative output. Who's to say? So, I I, I took this as cautious good news at the time. 
But uh, E3 2016 came and went, and no word about what Robert Drew was working on. <laughs> Still, nothing. And granted, E3 2016 was the Breath of the Wild year, so we weren't expecting anything. But it, it, it was still like, okay, it's been a year since Can You Dig It? And nothing, nothing mm-hmm. in any Nintendo Directs, nothing throughout the year. And it's it's been over two years since Tropical Freeze came out, and we have no idea what Retro is doing. Nothing. <sighs> Which would be fine, because again, that was a Breath of the Wild year, and good games take time. But then E3 2017 rolled in, and Nintendo announced Metroid Prime 4. Four. They they announced it by just showing the logo, and that's it. Like like it was su- such a such a weird move for them to make because it isn't how Nintendo normally reveals games. They usually reveal games when they have something to goddamn show. And with this, it was just here's a logo. We're working on it, but we're not going to tell you who's working on it in this in this in this. Like hey, he, hey, Metroid Prime Four. Okay, moving on. You know, the only other example I can think of, like, right off the top of my head, of something like that happening might be, um, God, what was it, like, maybe E3 2005, when it was announced that a new Smash Brothers game was coming for what was, at the time, called the Nintendo Revolution, Mm -hmm. even though they had absolutely nothing to show for it, and in fact, development on it hadn't even started yet. Yeah, you're right there. This seemed a little bit more measured than that, though. I feel like... It did. I feel like with that, it's just kind of like casting a big net to to get to get the hype fish pulled in. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna have Smash Brothers for the revolution. You say you want a revolution? Here you go. You're gonna get a Smash Brothers. And even with Smash Ultimate, they revealed it with that inkling trailer uh, with with the um, the fiery Smash Ball in, in its eye, and then the silhouettes of the some of the characters. But there, there's no footage or anything in, until E3. But, but however, it did end saying that it was going to come out in 2018. Switch was, you know. Right, right. Th- 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 there was still way more information in that. Like, just the fact that it was coming out the same year meant that it it was a lot, it carried a lot more information than the uh, than just showing off a little logo animation. Yeah. And, but it, in, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, though, it, this, this was, it felt like two things. It, it felt like, one, this was just them getting the the diehards who were just shouting about Metroid Prime every year to shut up. Like, okay, here you go. It's coming. Just just shut up. Don't don't bother us about it. We're gonna make it. We're making it right now, in fact. Go away. Uh but it, but also felt weird because Retro didn't have anything in E3 2017. And for a studio that is so married to a game franchise like retro and metroid prime it felt a bit foreboding that they were announcing metroid prime 4 pointedly not saying who was making it even though we later found out that was um bandai namco and and then like retro was still like in the dark as as or we were in the dark as to what retro was doing very weird and that was what, that was what was interesting about it because when it was revealed obviously the first thing that everybody assumed was aha this is what metroid's been working on all this time since tropical freeze and then it came out just uh, i think just a little bit later in the day that in fact you know they, they asked nintendo about that and they were like no that's not what retro's been working on yeah uh, like it was a, it was it seemed like a pretty a pretty safe assumption to make given how how like long the silence had been even then. Yeah. Uh, so this is this was the third E three where nothing was shown from Retro, and an E three where Retro's signature franchise was in effect taken away from them. And I say taken away from them. I that's that that's kind of dramatic because they didn't want to do Metroid Prime. Maybe you know so. It, it, but it's still something felt off. I, I couldn't quite in, put my finger on it, but in, something felt off. In retrospect, mm-hmm. haha. Uh, uh, I think that what we might be able to like, I think the way that I, that I might explain this or, or theorize why they did things this way would be that like, so they announced you know Federation Force a, uh, the year before, two years, or was it two two years before? Yes. And that got such a terrible reception. They knew that they were going to be announcing uh, Samus Returns at, at the Treehouse, mm. which which they did like just got like thirty minutes after they announced Prime Four. Right. I think that they that Federation Force might have given them such cold feet 
on announcing like a 3DS game that like I guess maybe they figured the fact that it was a 3DS game, it wasn't a it wasn't a big console release and it was a remake might I mean I don't it's it's weird because I really don't think that okay, well here's a brand new 2D Metroid game and it's coming out later this year. Well not brand new, but it's a remake and it, it was it had lots and lots and lots of new elements. Um but I, I don't think that would have ever gotten like a poor reception the way that Federation Force did. But I do kind of wonder if I guess kind of like how Sega constantly feels the need to reassure Okay, well, I know we're announcing this 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 new Sonic Mania, this classic Sonic game, but don't worry, modern Sonic fans. Don't worry, 3D fans. We'll have we have something for you coming up too, like crap like that. Yeah, I wonder if Nintendo just had cold feet and worried that they that, that there would be significant backlash if they showed off a 2D Metroid remake without also announcing that don't worry metroid prime fans was like we're, we're like a big console we don't have anything to show for it just yet but it is coming you know that's a good logical deduction josh and i hadn't really put put it together because again being in the e3 bubble i remember hearing about the the metroid 2 remake at e3 but it just kind of bounced off me like i talked about it with uh I think Cameron a little bit. And I was like, oh, is, is it that fan remake? Did they buy the rights of the fan remake? Nope. But, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, I remember that. But it just it just never, like, settled in the, in the crevices of my brain hole. It just, just didn't do it because the E3 bubble, it's just too all-consuming. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that, that's a good, that's a good um, connecting the dots there on the corkboard with the string. That's... We're, we're sure. making the connections here. Uh, I can't say for sure if that's accurate, but, you know, that sounds logical <laughs> and plausible to me, which I'll, I'll take in this topsy-turvy world we live in. I'll take the logical and the plausible. <sighs> but uh, E3 2018 came and went last summer without any news on either Retro or what Metroid Prime <laughs> 4 development, wh- wh- where that was going. Nothing. On either project. So, for those keeping score at home, this was now four E3s without any news from Retro. Th- uh, it, it was three years after Retro tweeted, Can you dig it? And then basically their Twitter just turned into acknowledging the holidays. Uh, it's Christmas. I'm Retro Studios. <laughs> oh, American Thanksgiving. How about that turkey, huh? Shamrocks. Just, just, he's like, who the hell is Retro's community man? I assume they don't have a community manager because this is the saddest. Anyway, and then of course, then every tweet is where the fuck is your new game, Retro? Like people don't take any radio silence from any studio well, but especially not that long. Like it just becomes uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, now it's 2019. Josh, it's, it's 2019, the year of our log, and the in the year of our uh, cob, even. And in, in early 2019, January, to be precise, we got an update on Metroid Prime 4, and it came in the form of a very apologetic video with Nintendo EPD General Manager Shinya Takahashi announcing that work on Metroid Prime 4 has started over from scratch with development moving to drum roll retro studios with tanabi producing well never say never again i suppose what the hell happened there josh uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh so i i've got i've got to i've got to come clean here just a bit though um so, in all honesty, I have known about Retro working on Metroid Prime 4 for several months now. Uh, I found out last summer, actually, uh, from Dave Throat, around the time of the K. Rule reveal, the last episode you were on before this one, uh, Dave Throat uh, told me, and I decided not to share it at the time due to, again, salacious details and I, I wanted to see where the story was actually going and when the story would actually break because it just felt like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Retro is working on Metroid Prime 4. What about their project? 
All right, so here's what I know, according to Dave Throat. Uh, all right. At the time I found this out last summer, it sounded as though that Retro was merely helping out with development of Metroid Prime 4 because the project was going off the rails at the time. It was an unmitigated disaster with Bandai Namco. And I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know the story or the details behind that. And we'll probably never know. But it it sounded as though that uh, Tanabe brought in Retro to right the ship. Like, oh, okay, Bandai Namco, this team, they don't know how to make a Metroid Prime game. We need to get uh, experienced hands in. We need Retro... And, and Michael Kelbell in here to have some sort of vision for this. And I don't know if the uh, the actual arrangement changed back then with, with Retro, Retro taking over development of Metroid Prime 4, or if that is a, like, end of 2018, beginning of 2019 development, where, because if they started over from scratch just now, then it must be a new development. It, it might have, like, Retro said... We can't do anything with what they've got. We've just got to take over. We, we've we got to just start over from scratch. We can't work with this game. I don't know that, mm-hmm. but uh, Retro has been involved <clears throat> with Metroid Prime 4 for at least half a year. Um, so, uh, I also learned that the project Retro was working on, uh, we'll call it the Can You Dig It project, uh, also didn't meet Nintendo's very high standards. Uh, it was a new IP, and that's the project David Wise was doing music for circa summer 2015. Uh, Nintendo actually pulled it from being shown at E3 2015, and they were never happy with it, and now it's been canceled. Ooh. And Retro is back under the thumb of Tanabe and back doing the Metroid franchise. Now I'm I'm a little surprised, quite frankly, that you're 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 kind of being this forthcoming, like publicly about this this mm. about all these salacious details, as you say. Salacious, yeah. Because that is so. What you're saying then is that can you dig it was in reference to like like a game that Retro had been working on, and thought as of the as of the moment they made that tweet that they would be showing off at E3 that year. Yeah, the only thing they were digging were their own graves for the project. Meaning whatever it was, it must have been pulled like at the last minute. Uh, yeah. Um I, I don't I like I don't know like <laughs> how last minute it was pulled, but yeah, it 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 was supposedly going to be shown at least I don't know if it was going to be demoed or if it was just going to be shown in video form, but nope. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> so that explains the years of silence from Retro. They were trying to salvage this project. Nintendo just said, nope, we're, we're pulling the cord. So sunk cost fallacy, apparently Nintendo believes it's it just better to better better to uh, cut your losses and, and start again. And... I don't know what this is. I don't know what the IP was. I don't know what the game was. All I know is what Dave Throat told me. Uh, and, and I feel like I, I'm comfortable at least talking about this because now we know Retro is is taking over Metroid Prime 4. So I'm like, okay, well, it's 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 clearly at least out in the open that they're they're now doing this. So I feel comfortable at least talking about this. So uh, that is also very interesting that Retro has been involved in some capacity uh going back to going back to at least the summer because what that tells me like you know and this is just me reading into this i yeah. i literally do i do not know <laughs> anything more than what than what Hyle said but and i don't know I anything specula- more than what i just said so but i might speculate that that might mean and, and knock on wood here i guess that we might see at least something about the game sooner rather than later in other words, I like when I saw Nintendo's original announcement uh, last month about this. I was like, "Well, that pretty much means there's no way we're gonna see. I, I we probably won't see anything about Metroid Prime Four at all until maybe E3 2020." But if, if it's been like since we don't, since we no longer can say definitively like when exactly they completely restarted development. 
you know, they might they could have something. They could have they might have a trailer by E3. The the only the only thing is if they did just recently scrap whatever Bandai Namco had, and mm-hmm. if Retro just took over the reins and just started from scratch, then maybe not. Then maybe the situation yes. is as Nintendo presented itself. But but yeah, Retro is trying to right the ship for the better part of half a year, and they couldn't. So I really want to know how bad this game was, Josh. <laughs> That that all of these events happened, uh, Retro's failure to convince Nintendo of their project, Bandai Namco, ba- I mean, Bandai Namco, I mean, you wouldn't, like, associate them with, like, a colossal failure like this. So, like, e- either Nintendo has very, very stringent, like, quality to me. I mean, you're never going to see a Sonic 06 from Nintendo, so it makes sense. Uh, it makes sense why they weren't even happy with Donkey Kong 64 back in the day, but... <sighs> No, I mean, we've, you know, what what you were saying earlier about Tanabe talking about like, you know, fiery, fiery fits of passion and, and yeah. getting very, very like driven. Like I've heard that, you know, I've heard that about uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. I've heard that about Yuji Naka. Uh, cases where like the producers of these series will say this isn't working. We're scrapping the entire thing and starting over from scratch. It's not exactly a particularly unusual thing for Nintendo for for and for that matter for for like a video game studio to do no it's not and and again that's why i don't really like getting into like the gossip part of this but eh, you know whatever i feel like it's fair game now the, the only thing i lament now is that there there's this potentially a david wise soundtrack out there that we have not heard and that we will mm-hmm. never hear at least in the proper context so Man, um, now I am really curious as to what what can you dig it was going to entail. Right, I know. So I don't know. There, there are there are also people right now who are who are spreading rumors. They're trying to say that Retro also has another project in the works. Like this 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 idea, this notion of a Star Fox racing game. They refuse to let this die, Josh. But uh <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Dave Throat didn't tip me off about anything of that nature from my vantage point given what i was told and what i just told you all i would say that this is just people trying to make sense of this five-year gap between retro releasing tropical freeze and then they, they also did tropical freeze for the switch like that was the only output they had in that time period so like i think people are trying to like make some sense of that not not putting together that, oh, there might be a canceled project in there. Like, there, there might be a game that just never got off the ground. And uh, it happens. And it, it apparently happened with Retro. So that's why I, I took us on that historical magical mystery tour. The magical misery tour just now, Josh, because I felt like it was important. So we could, so we could kind of understand what was happening behind the scenes as all of this was happening in the, you know, in public. So... Uh, do you, do you have anything you'd like to add to this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose also, I guess the, the, what you could say about the fact that we always, you know, the, we know this is relative, this has happened before. This isn't like an unusual thing to just scrap development and start over and, 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 and get it done right this time. I guess what is a little, more, a little unusual is that we'd hear about it during development while it was still going on Mm -hmm. like that nintendo would be this forthcoming about it and admittedly like this the the fact that they did that has gotten has gotten nothing but a positive response and and i think think? i i I, yeah i haven't seen anybody like actually like complaining at least not at least not in my circles about the fact i'll I'll tell you about that they did this just in just in a minute (laughs) okay like most of what i've seen has been people who are very very happy that they were that transparent about it and that they that they took this step. So I don't know. I think I, I do you that, think I, I think, it I think was the also, reason they well I think it was also like maybe publicly shaming Band Bandai Namco a bit. Like th- there's no other way to take it. You know, it's like oh 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 you guys just shit the bed here. Fuck you. Here's your public flogging. And 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 in some ways it makes me wonder whether. The, Met- the initial Metroid Prime 4 announcement at E3 2017 was designed the same way towards Retro. Like, 
Okay, you guys can't, you can't dig it worth shit. So here's Metroid Prime 4. I, you can't hmm. see, I just flipped, flipped uh, them the bird. Me being Nintendo to retro. Um, you know, the thing about that is, I really don't think that's the case. Because all I can find for, like, as far as Bandai Namco goes, is, like, rumor mongering sites or even i mean here's ign.com metroid prime 4 reportedly in development at bandai namco bandai namco declined to comment on the rumor uh but i don't really th- there's a lot of there's a lot of clickbaity things being like confirmed it's de- it's bandai namco but i don't think nintendo themselves i don't think that publicly shaming their developers is really something that 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 nintendo would do Hey, there's a new president in charge, Josh. He likes RPG golf. He likes shaming yes. people. <laughs> <laughs> He's a simple man. Got two passions in life. RPG golf and making his employees feel like shit. I can't wait to get him on the show to ask him these questions, by the way. <laughs> Well, we talk about Kid and Joe and, and all the classic Mario Golf parentheses Game Boy Color characters, which you people at home can make happen if you will it, if you believe. You know, I say the conversation is going to gonna change the world this year. We are going to bring about world peace. We're also going to bring the Nintendo president on the show to talk about RPG Golf and how much he hates Bandai Namco and or Retro. I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh... I don't know. So you, you talked about the reactions. <laughs> you talked about the reactions to this. And, you know, it's funny. So I, I, I saw I saw the you know video and I, I saw Retro was trending on the on the tweet machine on the tweeter. And I saw Metroid was 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 trending. And I was like, oh, what's going on there? Oh, has has this news finally broke? And and, and it had more so than I even knew. So I fired off. I fired off one of my twits. On the Twitter, and I said, "Congratulations to the Metroid fan base." Like, like you know, because because Josh, I, I I'm another year older, and I got insurance now, and uh, not health insurance, obviously, I can't afford that. <laughs> but uh, you know, like uh, something like auto insurance or, or renters insurance. I don't know. I got some insurances. You have but, some form of insurance somewhere. I'm right, sure. right. Uh, so anyway, uh, my hair is insured, so I don't end up like like Sean, sexy boy Michaels. But um, yeah, yeah, I was like, you know, I, I, because I, I, I was honestly happy for them because I was like, you know, this is what they've been wanting for so long, and it's the vi- vicarious fandom like response. The same thing I see when I watch your videos. Like, I, I may not be a true blue fan of their franchise. But God, I can, I'm happy for them. Like th- this is exactly what they wanted. It must feel so good. So I, f- I fired off a tweet, and I got some responses that were like, "Oh, there's no need to be so hateful." Like, like serious <laughs> responses. Like people just assumed you were being sarcastic. Yeah. So, so I don't know if they thought it was sarcasm or, like, or if they thought that. Like, they, they were just upset about the delay and thought I was gloating. Like, oh, oh, this Metroid Prime game you've been waiting for for a year and a half? It's been delayed. Congratulations, fuck faces. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Like, no. Like, I, I was happy. But people, uh, so, so I, like, I, I went to the inner circle. And I was like, uh, what? And, and uh, <laughs> I think it was Mamechi who, who is in the inner circle. $25 and up, you can talk to the Mech. Uh, the match, he, he said, uh, he said, oh yeah, like, like people in, in the circles I travel, they're livid because, because now it's going to be even longer until they play this game. And, so I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that mentality. Yeah. It, like if you're like hoping Metroid Prime is coming out <clears throat> quarter four, 2019 or whatever, sure. This might be a little discouraging, but Aren't you glad it's been delayed if you get retro back? I know, like, the, the team is not the same, but, like, the, the creative lead, you know, like, Kelbal is still there. There There is still some talent there, and, and they know how to make a Metroid Prime game. Aren't you happy that, like, you're getting the retro back on Metroid instead of 
a t- team that's not tested that apparently was making such a dreadful Metroid Prime game and Nintendo scrapped it. Like, isn't this good news? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, w- w- would you rather have a shitty game sooner? Or a game that lives up to expectations when it's ready? Like, th- this would be the, the same c- scenario if, uh, if, let's say, let's Rare farmed out Banjo-Kazooie to, to another studio within... Uh, Microsoft Studio. Well, excuse me, Xbox Studios now because they changed their name, name this week. Um, but like, let, let's say they they farmed a new Banjo sequel out to one of these studios, and it it suffered from Donkey Kong sixty four itis. Worse, it suffered from Sonic O six itis. And and sure. like Banjo was making out with this princess, like like Princess just, Diana just for some reason. Again. That's fine. Yeah, like no, no, no. Like like Kate Middleton <laughs> is just like. In this torrid love affair with Banjo and like Mumbo's watching with binoculars, and it's like, what is this? This is awful. Oh, I'm sorry. R- wrong. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, but um, <laughs> you, wouldn't you be happy then if 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 Phil Spencer said, "Our bad, Greg Mails is doing a new Banjo game. We're fixing this." Like, yeah, cause cause to celebrate, right? Apparently not in some circles, but you. You know, you can't please everybody well, all the time. I realize that now. So, uh, well, like so much of what we've been talking about, I think that I think that comes down to a matter of perspective and some degree of a matter of maturity. Um, in that, if you've never like, you know, if if you're looking at this from the perspective of like, oh man, like I, I I was expecting to hear about this game this year. I was expecting that this game might come out this year. And now all the, like if all this news means to you is that this game that you've been looking forward to and that you've wanted to play is now even more nebulously further away than it is before, then that might be how you react to it. Right? Yeah. I guess. I mean like I, it, it 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 does take perspective to be able to look at it, it, to be able to look at sort of the bigger picture and be able to say, okay, but this means, like, I guess one thing that I've noticed as I've gotten older is that the prospect of waiting years and years for something is no longer, like, nearly as daunting or as scary or as, it doesn't seem, I guess it's it's one of those effects of, like, time seeming to speed up as you get older. Right. Like, the prospect that Metroid Prime 4 might be three years away, I'm like, oh, okay, well, that'll be fun when it comes out. Like, I, I look forward to hearing more about it. Yeah. I don't, like, I will probably, hopefully be about, like, a, a pretty similar person to who I am now three years from now. I'm not, I'm not anticipating sure. a whole lot of, a whole lot of turbulence or a whole lot of big changes. But when you're younger and you might be a completely different, like a very different person with a, with a completely different perspective and a completely different place, you know, in the next couple of years, that's going to seem like so much longer of a time. And I think that's, if, if you, if you are seeing some degree of like pushback to that, I think that's where it's coming from. I, I get that. I get that. Like the only thing I have to fear now is inevitable death. And even then I plan to still play the Donkey Kong universe as a ghost or, or spirit man. Mm-hmm. I'll find a way. Like, you know, trust me. I Even when the conversation continues after my death, I'll haunt it. Don't worry. You'll, you you haven't heard the last from me. Uh, but I, I, I get that. I get that. And, you know, it's it's a perspective that comes with age and, and experience. And I, I, I've finally gotten past the I need a sequel at all cost mentality. And I want it to be the right team with something to say and the creative spark to say it. Like, that. that's all I want. Like, so if if say uh, Greg Mails and and Rare if if they don't want to do a Banjo Kazooie game because they have nothing to say about Banjo Kazooie anymore, I don't want them to have to make a Banjo Kazooie game because it's it's just not going to be in anybody's best interest. So that is what I'm worried about though with Retro and Metroid Prime Four. They didn't initially want this, so. <laughs> Do they have anything else to say? It it will be you know newer people working on this, given the uh, the turnaround at Retro since the original trilogy. But I don't know. I I, I hope they do. I, I imagine they do. If they felt like you know, if, if they're taking over the project, I don't know if that was like what they pushed for or if that was kind of put upon them. But uh, I, I certainly hope for the best for for the Metroid fan sake and for Retro's sake. Sure, sure. And the thing is now. If you look at, if you sort of consider the prospect of, okay, Retro pumps out three Metroid Prime games over the course of five years, 
and then they finally get to do returns and it's such a breath of fresh air and then they get to do tropical freeze i guess what i'm what i'm getting at is that like retro the prospect of retro doing a new metroid prime game now must look like a very different proposition from how it did when like tropical freeze development started in 2011 both because the team is bound to be different and moreover the perspective on the metroid prime trilogy is bound to be different from the people working on it i mean it's been long enough since the original metroid prime now that it's con- it's very conceivable that, like, younger members of the development team on Prime 4 could have grown up playing it. And, and, <laughs> no. and <laughs> Okay, okay, I guess you could have grown up playing Metroid Prime. I guess, I guess. Yes. That, that, that's far <laughs> enough back. But still, it feels icky. There are plenty of people who grew up playing the Game Boy Advance, you know, and that's that's all the same era. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're <laughs> At least I'm still keeping it sexy, though, right? Of course, of course. Of course. Uh, yeah. I, and, and, look... I, I, I'm sure Retro pursued this, especially after uh, they they couldn't dig it. You know, I, I I'm I'm sure this is the best case scenario for everyone. So I wish everyone. I guess, the best. I guess what I'm saying is that I figure with the advancement of technology, with the like the 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 fact that the developers hired at Retro and the developers on this project are bound to be the kind like a different crew, a very different crew from those that worked on the original prime trilogy. I'm not too worried about them having something more to say about it. I'm not too worried. I I think that what this whole news has shown me and, and this, this really shouldn't be surprised given how, how much, uh, how much the, the hardcore Metroid fan base makes of it. Whenever, whenever news comes out, I think that that Nintendo is willing to plug away at this game until it until it's the kind of game that's going to meet expectations. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So you just got to stay alive, people, and you'll you'll get to play yep. it. Yeah, and and you know, yeah. You know, oh, I don't know where I'm going to be two years, three years from now. What if I don't even like Metroid anymore? Just don't give up. Like. You think I gave up about Donkey Kong? No, I I went through life, man. I experienced some shit. I never gave up on Donkey Kong. I came back to my true love. That's what you got to do. Don't be so fickle. <laughs> All right, but but I but I do think that any sort of uh, any sort of negative reaction to this to this news. Like I said, I'm I I know that you saw a little bit of it on 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 the the DK Vine Twitter. I was hateful, I do Josh. Su- <laughs> yeah, I do suspect that was just more an effect of people reading it as 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 you being as you being sarcastic. You, you still think um, I'm like vintage Heil from off of DK Vine, like doing Donkey Kong poetry bitch slams? And no, I <laughs> I, I have matured in, into into an older, wiser, but still very sexy man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I do think that I, I do think that's probably I do think that's probably where it came from is that people are just so used to you guys like there's like people will remember the bad shit you know people oh, yeah. will remember the negativity so you uh, know people like as, even as, though you, you guys especially the internet in 2019 it's, it's basically bad faith theater that's what all it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I, I am very careful about the things I say on the internet, believe me. Unfortunately, I have nearly 20 years of output that I can't change because I don't like to retroactively, like, go in and, like... Like, luckily, nothing, like, as severe as, like, James Gunn, like, like what he got pulled over for by Disney. But you know what it is. Yes. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm not the same person I was, you know. And, and so, yeah, I'm legitimately happy for the Metroid fandom. Peace, mm-hmm. peace offering. Like, look, look, I'm happy here. Have a have a flower. Have a rose. Happy Valentine's. But I think Day. more gen. I think more generally, the people reacting negatively to this news are in the vast, vast minority. I don't, and and I think the people who have reacted negatively have probably been pretty swiftly corrected on that and been and been told like, okay, yeah, but it means that we're going to get the game that we want. And it's not it's not gonna be pushed out the door. It's not gonna be mediocre. If development wasn't going well, they've been they've been completely honest about this. And I mean to be fair, that's how I look at it too. Um the only thing about this that that 
that's kind of funny that's kind of funny for me is that ever since Prime 4 was announced I've pretty regularly gotten comments and gotten questions on, across social media like hey so what do you think of Metroid Prime 4 and I'm like there's nothing to go on what do you want me to react to did you like the logo Josh the logo looked it was very pretty yeah yeah did you like the four so in it? Do you think it should have been a Roman numeral four or just a regular number four? My real concern is actually if it has a subtitle, will there or will there not be a colon? Oh, right. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> well, uh, do you think now that Retro's back, there will be a Donkey Kong Easter egg? That would be really, really cool, yeah. Because there... Like, I would actually feel a little bit... A little. It would be unfortunate if after all of the Metro. If, well, I say all of. If after the cool Metroid Easter eggs that were in Returns and Tropical Freeze, if there wasn't some kind of a Donkey Kong Easter egg in Prime Four, I don't think there will be enough to make it "quote unquote" DKU. But I, 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 I imagine there will be something, even if it's just a banana somewhere. Uh, I, I mm-hmm. imagine there will be something. Maybe Professor Chops will just become their Royston, and he'll appear in everything Retro does from here on out. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I imagine. The retro shared universe. But then again, uh, we didn't find uh, the one Easter egg in Tropical Freeze. Uh, there's a Samus's down ship, but we, we didn't find uh, the, the actual Metroid hiding in Tropical Freeze until Shane Marches found it uh, several months back. So, and that it took took years. So, um, that is so cool that an Easter that something like that could be could be hidden for that long in this day and age. By the way, Josh, uh, nobody as of this recording, has yet found the missing episode of The Conversation Season 6. So just a reminder, it's still out there. You have actually, uh, you, you've actually heard it, though. You know it exists. I, I've heard it because, because the, <laughs> uh, the, there's a Cheeto Cheeto <laughs> here, in the, here in the episode notes that, that gives it away. So that's the only reason I've heard it. Honestly, I do... I would never ever have found it if I if you hadn't told me exactly where it was and what to do. I don't <laughs> I don't know how anybody is ever how you ever expect anybody to find this thing. That 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 that's where I get off though. That's that's mm, that's no. That's, see, I know that's, that's the thing. Like I I thought about suggesting Heil. Maybe you want to drop a few more hints about this thing. Maybe you want to point people in the right direction. But no, I don't think you do. I think I think you enjoy the fact that it may take many, many years for anybody to actually find this, or they may never find it at all. And that's a shame. It was a good episode. The thing, yeah, I really liked the episode. It was a fun one. But don't don't say anything. Uh, so- I'm not. I won't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we have much less to talk about here, and I'm not going to bore people with history this time around. Uh, rare. All right, let's talk about the other R's. Metroid now, rare was founded R. by uh, Chris and Tim Stamper. Yeah, uh, <laughs> back in the eighties. What? What? No. Okay. Uh, Phil Spencer, Saint Phil, mentioned back before the holidays. Uh, I'm of course referring to Christmas, Hanukkah, the Kwanzaa, Bodhi Day, New Year's, all the various Catholic ones that that fall in that time period. Uh, Festivus, you know, the holidays. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Phil Spencer mentioned before that time period that he was visiting Rare to see what they were working on. So I I I retweeted that. I was like, ah, hype, 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 hype. And people said, oh, come on, Heil. He just means more Sea of Thieves updates. This is coming from the people who don't like Sea of Thieves at all. And, you know, just like, "Eh, uh, Sea of Thieves, what Rare, uh, So, uh... In discussing E3 2019 with Director of Programming of Xbox Live, Larry Herb, Larry Herb, H-R-Y-B. Heil, you have, Heil, I'm sorry, you have his name spelled wrong in the doc. Oh, do I? (laughs) It's H-Y-R-B. Oh, Hyrb. Hyrb, there you go. Hyrb. Old Philo said the following. I saw what Playground is working on next, uh, uh, that that's, that's the studio playground under under Xbox Studios. Uh, it's rumored they're working on fa- a Fable game. I doubt that, though. I mean, I doubt it because... Oh, it's about time. Finally, a new Fable. 
I don't know, it's like people are saying retro was working on a star fox racing game so people say things i don't i don't know but uh should have been fable that's all i'm saying yeah i he also said i saw what rare is working on next comma and their continued success with sea of thieves i don't think phil spencer actually said the comma like out loud he didn't say comma and their continued success with sea of thieves but the 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 sheer implications there josh is that rare is working on something next alongside mm-hmm. the uh the persistent sea of thieves free updates so rampant speculation time yay welcome to the return of dkvine.com speculation center yep yep uh so i think it's gonna be professor chops game uh i, th- I think Phil Spencer bought Professor Chops. Now that Retro is doing Metroid games, cost mm-hmm. five billion dollars, and they're gonna fair have, price. They're gonna have fair price. Uh, I'm, I'm glad they negotiated that. Yeah, yeah. There's gonna be 18 games with Professor Chops uh, staggered over a three year period for mobile, <laughs> for for Xbox, for their new portable uh, ec- uh, handheld thing. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Improv is hard. Uh, so <laughs> now, does that mean that Professor Sp- Professor Chops will be featured as DLC in the upcoming X Boy Dungeon game? Oh, absolutely. Uh, DLC. He's gonna yes. be. He's gonna be. He's gonna be the the anchor. He's gonna be the Mario of the game. Uh, so, Josh. Now, for the longest time, and when I say the longest time, I'm not being literal because that's not true. It's it's since since rare. Uh, released Rare Replay, and then uh, Sea of Thieves really ramped up. There, there's, there's this notion that Rare is working on something else. Uh, something smaller, maybe? For the longest time, we just all assumed it was going to be Battletoads. But then it turns out Battletoads is being developed by another UK studio with Rare having oversight, but they're not doing it internally. So, it's not Battletoads. That's, that, that was taken off the table last E3. So then it it becomes this this game of well, what IP are they working on? I, I I'm just saying right now, and I don't have any insider knowledge. I don't have a Dave Throat at Rare pumping pumping info to me. Okay, so despite this this notion that Heil is a, is a paid shill for Microsoft and he's got the inside scoop with Rare, I don't. I don't. I I I, I harass them on Twitter about Mr. Pants. Like literally, that's <laughs> what you see is what you get there. But um. I I would think it's probably going to be a new IP. Like I, I think really, yeah. Like like what 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 else are you going to do? Viva Pinata, like cameo, like I I don't think it's see that be surprises me because like 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 you said, I like th- thinking about this just now. I'm just like I could see it going either way. However, I think especially given that Rare is not. You, you can't really pr- try to predict what Rare's going to do based on, like, how other development studios operate necessarily. Because they've never really been like that. They've never... Their output has always been, has always, like, been a, a little bit more freeform because they usually tended to have, I guess, the, the, the ability to pursue things like that. Right. At least, when, at least at the times, aside from the Connect Sports era, of course. Mm-hmm. But... After Sea of Thieves, like now that now that Sea of Thieves has come out and and it's it's getting a lot more well a lot more spotlight lately. I know yeah. it's 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 been doing very very well lately. Like I would think it would make the most sense now to revive one of their older franchises. Yeah, not saying that that not saying that that, that, that that's all I would be happy with. I've never been. Like one of those fans who's like, it has to be Banjo, it has to be Conquer. What is this? Sure. Team? You know, I was, I was never like, if they, if they make a new IP, I will, I will be happy about it, and I will be interested in it, and I will follow it, and I'll play it. But I think, given that Sea of Thieves was such a radical departure from like what they had done before, because you know, I one more like I love Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is like, one of my favorite games of last year. But to once again play Devil's Advocate, I do understand why 
people some people who enjoy who who enjoyed rare's earlier games and and kind of you know rare's golden age uh might like see if thieves might not do it for him and that's okay that doesn't mean that they're necessarily haters that doesn't mean that they're necessarily uh acting in bad faith or assuming bad things bad things about the game it's just that an online multiplayer focused game like that isn't going to be up up everybody's alley and that's okay so given that i do think it like it makes quite a bit of sense if this new thing that rare is making on is or is working on is some kind of a revival of one of those earlier franchises. And yeah, like perfect dark, you know, that that's just that that's just there. Um mm-hmm. uh but you know, I again like I think since since Craig Duncan took over there there's there's been a lot more confidence at Rare and I feel like Sea of Thieves was a gambit and and initially mm-hmm. it looked a little shaky when they launched it. Uh but with with uh, nearly a year of continual updates, making the game more robust and it's newfound success. Uh, I think like, I know internally Microsoft is very pleased. Phil Spencer is very pleased with Sea of Thieves. Um, he, like, and, and so much so that we know now that like they're sending other studios to rare to, so rare can kind of show them how it's done building a game like that. And, and so like they, they have, Rare has a lot of uh, internal credibility now at Xbox Studios yeah. that they didn't a decade ago. Like it, it's it's night like pe- people have this per- perspective, this perception of the relationship between Rare and Microsoft, and it's very much locked into the 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 metric era of Xbox, where it was just you know contentious. Or, or it was read as contentious, uh, yeah. and so much so that uh, like <clears throat> rare was in the the retro slot. Like, oh well, you know, you're this isn't good enough. We don't want that. Cancel that. Cancel that. Cancel that. Psh, psh, Xbox psh. Watch TV. Yeah, right. You're making Connect Sports for several years. Boo, boo. That the the boo boo that that was them giving the double finger, a la Dane mm-hmm. Cook, who was very popular when I was playing Super Smash Brothers Melee. Um. He didn't have frosted tips, though. I'll give Dan Cook that. Did not have frosted tips. But yeah, so so people have this notion. And he, as late as this week, I saw there was there was somebody uh, talking rumors on uh, on the internet, on the tweeter, on the, the tweeter book. Uh, they, they were talking about uh, this story. We're gonna we're gonna talk about in just a couple of minutes before we take calls and blissfully end this episode uh so i can go <laughs> wash my face and remove the conversation no machine. josh this episode isn't gonna be three hours long come it's on still we'll, not. we'll wrap it up what you, look unless something catastrophic happens like one of us has a heart attack and the other tries to revive the other one over skype then then no this episode is not gonna go much longer um hi i have you don't have to you don't have to reassure me i i i was never the i i love I love the length of the episodes. I, c- I can be here all night. I'm just going to edit that that quote out of context. Josh Wallen, I love the length. See, I thought about taking it even even deeper than that. Wink. I'll, I'll use that. Then I'll play. And then I'll, I would put it uh, against the Shawn Michaels theme song, Sexy Boy, but then YouTube mm-hmm. will further demonetize me. And then I would actually have to pay. <laughs> You'll them. have to actually start paying, me. right? I'll, I'll have to pay Vince McMahon like I'm a Saudi royal. Mm. I I just looked at oh the camera. I just looked at the camera right now. You didn't could see because there's no actual camera here, but I just Jim Halpert it all up in this podcast. Uh, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, what the hell was I talking? I uh, oh yeah, yeah. The r- rumor mongers were saying like, well. Microsoft is just terribly displeased with Sea of Thieves, and they hate Rare. And, and God, and they're, they're they're the the, ru- the rumor was trying to spin this notion that Rare was going to be making games for Nintendo again. Like just just complete. Like <sighs> I, I was just laughing because I don't have a Dave through it at Rare, but I do know some things, and I know that right now the relationship between Rare and Microsoft has never been better. So, 
<sighs> anyway. That's here. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, like, you don't even need a source for that. You just... <laughs> Just look at what's happening with Sea of Thieves right now. Like, the, the game has finally taken off. It, the, all right. Like, I guess getting back to Speculation Center a little bit more. And this 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 seems pretty obvious, I think. Whatever Rare is, like, whatever... like For one thing, I think it's really cool news that, that, uh, that Phil Spencer said what Rare is working on next comma and their continued success with sea of thieves i think it's it's really cool that he let that slip in there and 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 you can edit that clip out of con out of context as well if you'd like to sure i will but april fool's day is coming oh boy i guess like even if what rare is working on is a new ip i would imagine that it will be something more single player focused um and i think it would be i think it may be something more in terms of gameplay, not saying that Sea of Thieves world or its lore or its its uh, its world building isn't traditionally rare, but I think in terms of an approach to a single player game design, the, a new IP from Rare after Sea of Thieves may be something more traditionally rare. Yeah, if that makes sense. No, it does. It does. Um, so this is just conjecture on my part and i don't know why i'm reading this the way i am but so last week or two greg males has been posting all these unused ideas uh or early ideas he had for sea of thieves that didn't make the cut and and it's mm-hmm. it's, it's weird because i was like usually greg males doesn't it is reflective about stuff on twitter that uh, games he did years ago so I'm wondering now that the game is approaching its, its one year mark and, and they've got an infrastructure in place to keep it going. They've got like teams in place for lore and, you know, and, and what they're adding to it and, and, and further tweaks and, and flourishes. But, but the basic design of Sea of Thieves, is, it's, it's the, the game is designed. So like, it's not really a Greg Mails game anymore. It's it's the Prestons and Mike Chapman, Joe Need, obviously is is you know the the big one there. But you know, and, and and on down, you've got all these people who are making that run like clockwork. So could Greg Mails have moved on to another project? I don't know, but he seems very like almost nostalgic at this point for Sea of Thieves. So. It wouldn't surprise me if if he had his toes in this project, but of course it wouldn't surprise me if I'm just completely misreading the situation because I am an idiot. So, uh, eh, it, it's going to be interesting. And I, the way Phil Spencer made it sound like we might have an inkling uh, at E3 this oh year, <laughs> uh, we we might like at the very least they might do like they showed Sea of Thieves in 2015, just uh, a reveal, you know, but. That would be pretty cool, and um, I'm 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 mean, I'm a rare fanboy. I'm gonna look forward to whatever they do, and I I just trust they're gonna put a goldfish in there. It's some reason for us to cover it. I know Sea of Thieves is still officially not DKU, but uh, again, long game there. It will be Black Eyes in expanded materials. Just uh, anyway, so <laughs> at this point, I think they're doing it on purpose, Heil. I think they're basic like. They know how bad this one co- <laughs> this community wants it. Well, yeah, and like, they're but... just purposely being like, "Oh no, yeah, there's a black eye. Here's supplementary material. Yeah, Captain Black Eyes. He might be in the game eventually." Uh, the the thing is, they still haven't put Flameheart and the uh, the Gold Hoarder Skelly in the game. They they've alluded to them. They're building up to them. They still have not physically appeared in the game. So it's, it's the same thing with Black Eye. They're, it's the, like the long game. They're not. It, it, it's like a the Sea of Thieves is not a traditional game. It is like a multi-season television show. So, yeah, we're we're gonna get them. Don't worry. Just just don't worry. Uh- <laughs> it's very important to Hiles' continued mental health that we can consider Sea of Thieves, even though it may not appear to be DKU right now. It will be. It's Schrodinger's DKU. And plus, it sounds like we're getting monkeys in the game come March 20th. So, you know, the monkey butlers I've been harping on about, we're going to get the monkey butlers. It's the Pepito Kong rule, essentially. 
Well, you know, I well no. <laughs> well, oh, oh. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, but well, okay. So I was gonna say there's no way that rare could allude to the Kongs, but we also have a little bit more to discuss, Josh, because maybe we will hit three hours. Additionally, Microsoft <laughs> Studios has rebranded to Xbox Studios, as I already mentioned, and the Xbox brand itself is expanding. At GDC on March 18th to the 22nd, uh, they're going to be getting into the specifics of this, but Xbox Live will be available on the Nintendo Switch. So, rampant speculation, ahoy. Um, you know, this is really where the whole, what you were talking about in the last section about, oh, Rare is going to be making games for Nintendo again. <laughs> That's where all this comes from, because those rumor-mongering websites have done such a, a like, a, a carpet bombing of this, as if what it means is that Xbox, like, your Xbox library will be playable on the Switch. Yeah, no. Or that... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. That, but that's never what's been said. No, no, no. Uh, Phil Spencer has been very big on crossplay. He's been very b- and very big on on having uh, an interconnected web. Like there, there's no reason to segregate like uh, your status, your stats, uh, achievements on, on one console or another. And and Sony's been very reluctant to play ball with this. Nintendo apparently is open to it, and this this fits with the ethos of what Phil Spencer was talking about way back when he first took over. Was that he doesn't view Nintendo as competition? He views Nintendo as a potential ally. It's a completely different market than uh, than what Xbox is uh, fighting out for with with the PlayStation. So why not work together? Like if it's in both of their benefit to to build like a better community, why not do it? And and we're seeing that we saw it with Minecraft initially, but you know Minecraft was a special case, and uh, but now it's really been steadily growing, and now it, it sounds like we're we're really getting there, and and of course this this people are going to be talking about banjo and Smash, you know, uh, yes, I know, I know, I know. If they've been at the table for this, then surely they were at the table for that, and then there's the the the. The, the code in Smash Ultimate about Jet Force Gemini and Blast Corps. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, of course the thought has crossed my mind. You don't think it's crossed my mind? Of course. But, anyway. <laughs> 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 but yeah, what this, what this doesn't mean, necessarily, is that Rare is developing for Nintendo again, and they're making Banjo 3 for the Switch, and it's coming out quarter 4, 2019. And Microsoft hates them. And and guess what? Nintendo hates Rare, too. Uh, Miyamoto hated the Stampers. Absolutely hated them. That's why they had a working relationship for so many years. Just just detested each other. Doesn't... <laughs> These rumors... <laughs> anyway. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 that, that, that rumor bugged me because of how much bullshit it, it spun out of this, this notion that... <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, Xbox Live is coming to Nintendo Switch... And and this might mean banjo and smash. Okay, well that's that's getting a little bit further astray, but okay, I'm still with you. And and then all of this other stuff that just sounds really good for clickbait. But the the thing is, this news is kind of just like another part of what I think Microsoft has done so well this generation with the Xbox, and I don't know if they're going to get credit for it. In except in, until like we get some more historical perspective on it, mm-hmm. because so many people love to say, you know, okay, well the Xbox One, ah, oh, whatever, it doesn't have any good exclusive games, or it doesn't have as many exclusive games as the PS4, and that's true. But I really do love what Microsoft has done this generation with things like the Play Anywhere initiative, mm-hmm. or the Game Pass, mm-hmm. yeah. or especially this, like making these inroads into making like their 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 competitors into more of allies yeah and 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 because like nintendo i don't think nintendo ever would have reached out to microsoft to do something like this no absolutely no. but 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 they would be receptive to it um so with with this news specifically i think that xbox i think that 
Like, on the one hand, of course, no, this doesn't necessarily mean, okay, well, Microsoft's making games for the Switch now, and, 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 and like, Banjo 3, like you said, that's, that's yeah. overstepping it. But I do think the idea that Xbox Live is going to be available on the Switch, that has to mean more than just, well, we're going to continue having crossplay, and, like, you'll get achievements. If, if, you, if you play, like, our games on the Switch, your Xbox account will get achievements. I do feel like there has to be something more to it than that. And I guess on that, in that regard, I wouldn't like Microsoft is never going to have like a Switch exclusive game, of course. Right. But I wouldn't be surprised if much like the Play Anywhere uh, initiative that's been done with PCs, which I love so much, I guess I wouldn't really be surprised if we started seeing more games that were cross compatible on the on the Xbox and the Switch and the PC and by like you know my, like Microsoft published games that would work on the Switch of course because mm-hmm. it is quite different hardware from the Xbox One uh, that that wouldn't really surprise me. Yeah, I I think this is an important stepping stone. This is this is a rung on the ladder that can now be climbed, and what what it might mean in the future is is maybe closer to what people are already breathlessly speculating about you know maybe maybe you know th- th- this would mean good things at the very least for the historical stuff that like say diddy kong racing the rights diddy kong racing if they're yeah. working together all of a sudden that opens up that game to appear on a potential n64 classic or just being on on uh available on you know eShop or whatever uh that that that's important and and so the fact that Nintendo and Microsoft are now at the table talking making deals making an alliance a partnership that me- that's such good news for DK Vine because uh in 2002 you know our, our parents got divorced and <laughs> And, and now, and now, our 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 dad is, is talking with our mom's new dad, and they're, they're they find out they have a lot in common, and and they like hanging out together, and this, this means we all get to spend more time together. I like this again. I love that you just you so naturally relate your 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 own relationship to to video games and video game franchises, video game companies, to things like meeting your soulmate or your parents getting divorced, like. <laughs> But like slotting that in the same way is but, is just the most natural thing in the world. By the way, yeah, my, my parents never uh, got divorced, at least as of this recording. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't, haven't talked to them in the last week or two, so maybe, but I, I don't, I don't think so. So yeah, that that was just a fantasy. But I get it; it's an apt metaphor. Yeah, I I, I like meta, I like metaphors. So I guess watch this space. Like we'll we'll put a pin in it. And and come back to it later down the line. We'll see where this goes. And it's going to be interesting. March 18th to 22nd, we'll find out more about this. That's also uh, right around the time of Sea of Thieves' one-year anniversary. Monkey Butlers, baby. Mon- and also a lot of other content, too. But Monkey Butlers. And, and who knows? You know, if Banjo is coming to Smash, that would be a good time to reveal it. Why not? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just talking shit now. Uh, so... We do have a couple calls to take. A few calls, you might even say, given that there are three. Just like there are Metroid Prime games currently existence. There, there's a fourth call, but we won't get it for a couple of years. So we're, oh. we're going to take these calls, <laughs> and then we're going to end. I'm just going to end the episode. I'm going to go wash my face. No, not not even going to say anything. Just, just going to end it. After call three, it's over. Well, I mean, if call three brings up anything we need to discuss... We'll you know, actually, it. I have an inside source as well. Yeah. Uh, they were going to put Banjo in Smash Brothers, yeah. but then IGN called them and said that they'd rather have Jetpack guy in there. Oh, right. It sounds like something IGN would say. Yeah. Yeah. So, confirmed. All right. Call the first. Let's play it. Hey, guys. It's Van Um Calling to talk about retro and rare and what they're working on. You know, I like bears, Hyle. I want to play a game with bears. You think Metroid's going to have bears? I mean, there's so many bears in the DKU, 
and even Rare can make a game with bears. Cause, I mean, there, there's Foggy Bear, Mash Master Bear, Yorn Bear, Rash Bear, Blue Bear, Banjo Bear, Tootie Bear. Uh, who else we got? Boomer. There's Boomer. There's Barnacle Bear. There's Soggy, Moggy, and Groggy. Mrs. Boggy. I mean, who can't forget Mrs. Boggy? Um, you think that, you think there'll be a bear in the next game? That's all I want. That's all I want, Kyle. For Valentine's Day. Make sure there's a bear in there. Why, why are you talking to me uh, about your... Like, I can get it done? I still haven't gotten Sea of Thieves DKU. I hold no power. Um, well, you you want to talk about flashbacks to E3 2015. <laughs> that, listening to that What's Brothers, Which Brothers Bear is Best theme song over and over and over again over the course of, like, three days. All right, yeah. No. Oh, it was even more fun asking people in the video game industry that damn question. <laughs> So, I I don't know. Well, I well, I I have no I have no clue what retro or what rare is working on. Like I really don't. It's, it's completely up in the air. Maybe maybe I'm sure I'll have an allusion to a bear. See if thieves has allusions to bears, but you know, no physical bears have appeared thus far. Uh, and and Metroid Prime Four, like I don't know, space bear. Like I I, I very much doubt they didn't even put. Bear. Well, they they did have a polar bear in Tropical Freeze. I take that back. So, yeah, you know. But I no, probably not. Probably. Besides, it's the year of the pig and not the year of the bear. So, Retro does That's like pigs. Professor Chops. Yeah, Ret- Retro loves pigs. Rare loves pigs. There are a lot of pigs in the Donkey Kong universe. Just just a a whole mess of pigs. What do you call uh, like a, a flock of pigs? Like like a like a. A whole mess of pigs. You were right. Uh, yeah, a bushel of pigs. Uh, I'm gonna look this up. I'm, I'm gonna. This is okay, I'll tell you what. We'll play the next call while I look this up because this might take a while to get the actual term for this because I don't think it even exists. Here we go. Next call. Hey, slush and Greek geek critique. Fourteenth time caller here. Ooh, it's the mysterious time caller. I wonder who it is. Just one of the many mysteries that is part of DK Vine Presents the Conversation. It's a really clever pun. Ooh, mystery. I'm a person who played through the DKC trilogy as it was released for SNES, then played through the Metroid Prime trilogy, and then was Is This Real Life when Retro was given the keys to Donkey Kong Country. So I'm actually very happy that Retro is back to work on Metroid Prime 4. But now I want that to be a whole trilogy that me- that Retro works on. And I think it's fine if another company develops Donkey Kong Country, Baja Blast, or Banana Republic, or whatever the third of the sequel trilogy will be called. After all, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble was a different development team than DKC or Diddy's Conquest. So it's appropriate for DKC 6 to be a completely different development team than Returns or Tropical Freeze. I'm going to call out a bunch of first-party developers under, Nintelo, under Nintendo's umbrella, and if one jumps out at you, that would be good for DKC 6. Then let's go with that one. So here are some of the first-party studios. 1UP Studios, Monolith Soft, in cube, in the cube, in the cube, in the cube, in the cube. That's what I'm going with. Alpha Dream, Camelot, Good Feel. I actually think Good Feel would be perfect. They did Wario Land, Shake It, and the Kirby and Yoshi yarn yarn games. They should 100% make the next DKC game, just not out of yarn. How Laboratory, Intelligent Systems, Next Level Games, or how about Payone? Give that final DKC game to Payone and have them fully integrate everything into it. The Payone era could be fully integrated into the country brand. Do you hear me, Payone spy? Whoever you are, the Payone spy. Just another mystery that is part of DK Vine presents the conversation, just like that 
hidden episode. That's another mystery. There's a lot of mystery. Ooh, mysteries. Ooh, mysteries of the conversation. It's a really clear. <laughs> so, Josh, the name for a group of pigs. This is according to Ask.com, by the way, <laughs> which I believe used to be run by a butler named Jeeves. Not a monkey butler, but a, but a butler. Uh, the name for a group of pigs depends on the animal's ages. A group of young pigs is called a drift. Huh. A drove or a litter. Groups of older pigs are called a sounder of swine, a team, or passel of hogs, or a singular of boars. That doesn't really help me. It just confuses me. So, I think what we're getting at here is we're trying to figure... We're back to Speculation Center. We have Donkey Kong Country. We have Banjo-Kazooie. We have Ukulele. What is the Professor Chops spin-off franchise going to be called? Obviously, he'll get his own, like, his own uh, parcel, his own, his, uh, sorry, parcel of hogs. He'll, he'll, get, he'll get his own extended cast of pigs. But what might we call that? It's important. It, it is important. It, it is important. And I... I don't know, like, it, if it's a racing game, if, if Kevin Callahan turns out to actually have been telling the truth this entire time, and and, and, and we go with Drift, then we could call it Professor Chops Tokyo Drift, and then it would have two meanings. You've cracked the code. Uh, You've what? done it. Yeah, so that's one less mystery. There you go. Whatever time. You heard it. it here first, rumor mongering sites. Uh, yeah. No, so, like, I I don't know who could be developing the next Donkey Kong game, and I think the I next do. Don- what? Look, these two stories the, through this whole episode that we've been we've been revolving around. Look right. at the logo, right? Rare retro, rare retro. There's your answer right there. We know that Xbox Live is coming to Nintendo Switch, which logically means that all Xbox games will also now be playable on the Nintendo Switch. Well, of course, yeah. we know based on this that Rare definitely hates Microsoft now and is interested in developing games for Nintendo again. Absolutely. So that's the answer right there. Mm. Donkey Kong Country Four. Developed by Rare. Yeah, and it's going to be called Donkey Kong Country 4 too. Same way Banjo uh, Kazooie 4 is Banjo 3E. We're just going to ignore what came uh, in the interim. Get out of here, Returns. Get out of here, Tropical Freeze. They're going to call. No, no, what they'll do is because we had Returns, which is a very Batman term, and then we had Tropical Freeze, which we'll pretend was Donkey Kong Country Forever, like we used to call it. And then we'll pretend like there was Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong Country, like Batman and Rob. So that, it'll be Donkey Kong Country Begins. We're going to reboot it with Rare, and, and it's, it's going to have. Uh, it's it's going it's gonna, it's gonna to have a gravelly voice, Donkey Kong. And it's going <laughs> to. So I'm, I'm, All right then. We have yeah, one more call. Just. <laughs> hey guys, it's Ethan or Ben here. Sorry about the background noise. I'm currently at Epcot with some pals. Anyways, uh, about this week's topic, retro and rare. Uh, retro. I'm I'm willing to believe the Starbucks Grand Prix leak. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just, eh, I I. I guess I'm a little maybe it's rare on the other hand. You know, I could just I could just uh, get overly optimistic right away. Banjo three and all that. I I as I said I made a fool to myself. A fool of myself way too many times on this podcast about that. But anyways, all I'm gonna say is and hopefully you just could have some good thoughts about us. Personally, all I wish for Rare's new games that it's single player. Like Sea of Thieves uh, well I had some legitimate issues with it, at least at launch. Really, uh, this MMO, multi, big multiplayer game, was kind of a hard sell for me at the start, I'm more than willing to admit. So, really, old IP, new IP, all I'm really hoping for is a single-player game, and I was wondering I'm wondering if how you felt about that, whether you'd want it, want another just big, you know, single-player game, or you're really banking on them pulling another CFCs. I think that's less likely, but hey... Might as well throw the option out there. Okay. Okay. Bye, guys. I'm off to Mexico.
This has been a File 2 production. Uh, uh.